Hello, whiskey folk. How are we all? It's Roy, quarter to ten, Thursday night, another VPub. Thanks so much for everybody that's been waiting and banging on the door already. Just let me mute that out before it starts in your ear. Yes, thanks to everybody that's been standing outside waiting already, patiently chatting to each other, and uh, come in, grab a seat in the lounge, sit down and tell us what you're sipping tonight. Um, the theme tonight, as you know, is... Um, I guess top five 2018 whiskies that I have connected with this year that are not necessarily mine or anybody else's best top five list. But I'll explain the reasoning for this. It's not intended to be clickbait. It's not intended to, to go up against the top five videos that I put earlier this year. It's completely, completely different. Now, if you're watching this on the replay, welcome. I'm very, very grateful that you do. What I'm going to do with this top five list tonight is timestamp it below. So if you're watching after the event, hopefully I've done my housework after this live has finished and you can skip to each of the individual five whiskies so it functions in some order um, after the live. But welcome to everybody that's actually here. And that's the point of these streams. I get a lot of comments from people saying, I'm just not willing to invest two hours or whatever. I completely understand these videos exist on the channel because there's nowhere else for them i can't segregate them and put them elsewhere they exist there um because we're able to watch the replay of the live streams that we share the idea behind these is that we all get together have a bit of kind of shared experience but whiskey community and uh, get together for um, a couple of hours there is far far more people that complain that two hours isn't long enough but I think it's long enough for me. Let's see if for the first time in about four or five weeks, I can manage to keep tonight's stream under that two hour mark. We'll see. I don't have any guests tonight. It's just me. And up until this point, I don't have any moderators either, but that's okay. If I don't have any guests, hopefully I'll have more chance to kind of hang out with you guys and talk to you guys as well. So let me explain what this top five list is. It's whiskies that I actually got to try for the first time this year. Um, that would qualify it for this list. It was whiskies that I kind of understood a bit more this year or whiskies that I reconnected with, whiskies that I realized were being neglected by me or that um, I hadn't really given them enough time. That kind of idea. And Daniel Vermas, I think he's in, I think I saw Daniel earlier on, um, he left a funny comment on Facebook actually, he predicted that the five whiskies that I, I picked tonight would be a lineup of Lagavulin's with a Longmorn in there and a Deanston something, which I thought was really, really funny. And it kind of just goes to show that already, despite me not putting out what I perceive as being that much content and that much opinion, that I'm already kind of been seen to, and I stand by all of those whiskies, by the way, I stand by all of those um, kind of top fives that I shared. But I realized that there's so much more that I'm enjoying that's sitting in the cabinet that I love sharing with people that I'm perhaps not sharing with you. There were a lot of candidates and anyone who's tried to put together a top five list of anything will understand how difficult it can be However, it was a bit easier for me because I looked at the collection, the stuff that I'm sharing and drinking right now with the idea that I could only choose things that I've really been enjoying in 2018. Things that have came up a level or two for me in 2018. Some of them I've already shared with you either through these streams um, or in other broadcasts, other videos, um, but some of them I probably haven't. Let's jump into the lounge and say hello to a few of you guys and thank you very much for waiting. 102 of you in already before I've even had a chance to say hello. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the stream and just go scroll backwards for a little while and try and say hello to you. Zach Andrews is in. Fantastic, Zach. Great to see you and my friend. Um, I have something packaged up and ready to ship to you. Parcels to go um, looks like they'll be able to pick it up tomorrow. I'd be pretty excited to get that out to you. I know it's taken a long time. 
and vetoes also is get is ready to go. But I might pause with vetoes because there's a possibility that I'm going to get a chance to do to do a collaboration with the cask strength guys. And if that happens, there's something I want to put into vetoes package as well. But your package will be mailed out to you. Thank you for your patience. Malt content is in. Good to see you, my friend. Prestige liquids from from Australia. Superb. Good morning, Andrew. Welcome in. Gregor is in. Gregor, good to see you from France. Cask mate, fantastic to see you. I think it's. Matthias, we got to introduce ourselves this week. Uh, Mashburn Ross is in, superb, wonderful to see you. I've got an Anuj Manuja, that's a new name, and I bet you I have made an absolute mess of the pronunciation. Um, maybe you can correct me, but welcome in, fantastic to see you. Amy is here as well, wonderful Amy, drumming up some thumbs up, no doubt, even before the stream has even started. Whiskey Jason from Germany, Jason Un Unsworth from Texas. Jason, wonderful to see you in again as well, I guess. I don't know if the holiday season's kicked in yet and some of you guys are getting home from work a wee bit earlier than you normally would. The whiskey friend is Alan is in. Welsh Toro, superb guys. Iladi is in from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, I guess. Uh, Toby is in, superb to see you, Toby. Scott from just across town, my friend Scott, Kilted Moose is in. Donald Rance, Keith Corbett, McAllen Fine and Rare, the doc from Germany, wonderful, my friend, good to see you. Mark Goins is in. Whiskey Throttle, Daniel, I've just been chatting to Whiskey Throttle on another stream. Uh, great to welcome you in, Daniel. Um, Daniel Vermas, as I mentioned earlier, is in as well. Um, ATFC, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Coffee is here. Fantastic. Thank you very much for pressing that like button, my friend. Great to welcome you back in again. Nicholas Burt is here. Keith Corbett. Vin from No Nonsense Whiskey. Vin, you're wonderful. Thank you for joining. I'm just going to do something here. Uh, I don't think I can set you as a moderator from inside this chat. I'm not sure if we're going to see the Whiskey Rev tonight. He said he's going to try and join us, as did uh, Jason Whiskey Wise. But we should be okay. I should be able to chat to you guys a wee bit more tonight. Uh, Anna is in. Wonderful to see you. John Paul Vanderhoven. Kev, Kevin Grant, my, my friend Kevin, my cousin actually, he's drinking Ardbeg Ugadal. And uh, he's just across town as well. Kevin, great to see you and my friend. Um, Mark Slinger, superb. Ben is in. Ben Diedrich is in. Uh, let me guess, he's saying Glengoyne Teapot Dram. That's not in the lineup, Ben. Glengoyne 30, I haven't even tried it yet, Ben. As you know, I tried to get hold of it. Glengoyne 25, <laughs> Glengoyne 18, Glengoyne Cast Strength. Wow. How, am I getting known as a Glengoyne fanboy as well? Listen, if something's good, it's worth sharing. Glenn Goyne may or may not make an appearance this evening. Thanks for, very much for that, Ben. Nice to see you in. Fantastic to have you. Newt is in. Gregor, Gregor McQuee, fantastic. Whiskey Radar, that looks like a new name. Whiskey Radar, welcome in. Good to see you here. Whiskey Dram is in. Um, Bob Finnegan, another new name, fantastic. Lots of new names coming in as well. If it is your first time here, just say hello in the chat. Um, they're really quite friendly people in the lounge here and just tell us where you're from and perhaps what you're drinking. And I'll share with you what I am drinking. This is my first of the five. And this is a distillery um, like so many of them that I tried in the past. And you could argue that I wasn't ready for the whiskey. You could argue that the whiskey wasn't ready for me or a mix of the two, whatever, but just wasn't doing it for me. But this distillery, virtually everything I try from them right now is really, really worth spending some time with. Um, they're doing the presentation very, very well. They are doing the pricing is very, very good value as well. And it's very, very clear that they are set up first and foremost, to take care of people who love whiskey. Their market is very much not the casual, high volume whiskey drinker, but their market is focused very much on whiskey fans. They're giving us the presentation that we've been asking for as whiskey fans, and I think that needs to be applauded, and the price is staying nice and comfortable as well. That's what I've had. I'm just about to finish this dram. That's what I was sipping as we started up. These drams, these five whiskies I'm gonna share with you, 
like I say, they're in no particular order. This is not five, four, three, two, one. The way they're laid out tonight is just based on kind of profile, perhaps, or just the order I was in the mood to to to, to set them in this evening. But what they're intended to be is is nothing more than a subjective personal list of mine to maybe give you a little bit of uh, inspiration, to maybe give you a little bit of confidence in something, um, that I'm enjoying it, that I see the values there, that it's an engaging whiskey, and it's maybe worth your time and your hard-earned cash as well. Of course, sometimes people buy things in my recommendation, and hopefully they end up enjoying it. Most of the feedback I get is that you're enjoying it, but I guess a lot of the time if you bought it in my recommendation and didn't enjoy it, perhaps you would be reluctant to share that. So I don't get as much of that. But I'm fairly confident that if you invested your time in Aaron, you would really start to enjoy the whiskey. Aaron has truly come of age, I've said it before. Um, they've got a 21 year old just released. I would love to get my hands on a bottle of that. It's, it's just for a 21 year old, it's very good value. It's retailing about 110, 120 pounds in the UK of that order. Um, and the range is very, very solid now 10, 12, 14, 18. And as I say, 10, 21. They've also got various um, uh, special releases that they do cask finishes that come out non age statement. You might remember that last week with Scott Adamson from Tomatin, we shared an Aaron Bothy together. Um, really good stuff. And like I say, worth your time. And I would suggest that if you're not familiar with Aaron, I wonder, I'm just going to scroll down to the comments here and see if anybody's agreeing with me. Whiskey Wolf Rolf is saying good choice. So I guess that um uh drama clock good to have you in drama clock is, ju is just said just bottle killed at an 18 year old lovely stuff so fantastic people out there are already enjoying this um there was there's another guy whose opinion i, I trust a uh, roddy from he works in the good spirits company in glasgow he's also a member of our whiskey club um actually the chair i think and i was in the shop talking to him and we were talking about aaron and he mentioned um i had just I finished the recycled video where I threw one of these away and empty one of these away and I gave it a very good review and I said in that recycled video that I would replace it and of course here it is here. I've just opened this bottle tonight and um, he agreed and he he believed that the 14 year old was, was the pinnacle. It was very, very optimal for the style. I like them all, but I think the reason that this is optimal for me is the price. This is about £44, £45 for a 14 year old. Just going to pour a little teaspoon more so I can sit it with you while I pick up some comments from the chat. So there we have it. My choice, if you haven't explored it already, and a whiskey that I have fully connected with during 2018 was Aaron, and specifically this expression, the Aaron 14, which I think is a perfect balance. Orbisphere is saying, Aquavita, great choice. Aaron has such great balance between spirit and oak. Yes, I find it to be, I find it to be quite citrusy. I, I get a lot of kind of orange, fresh, zingy orange notes from it. There's, there's some nice malt, but it's not overly malty. Um, and more than anything, it's especially in the nose, it's quite a floral prospect. And again, the presentation, 46% ABV, age statement under core range, like I said, they do do non-age statement products for different reasons. But here it says non-chill filtered, written on the label. And directly underneath it, in this 14-year-old expression, it says bottled at natural colour. Now, even the distilleries that are doing good natural presentation, how many of them are putting that front and centre on the label? Like I say, when they're doing things that we've been asking for, I think it needs to be applauded. So yeah, we, it looks like we agree, Orbisphere. Good to welcome you in. Um, Malt Review saying, hello, all too many to name individually. Yes, I would agree, um, Jason, fantastic. It's, and I, I tend to find that a lot of the time the chat is flying past when I'm on other live streams as well, is a lot of it is that the greetings backwards and forwards and you start to feel a wee bit guilty that you miss people out and things. And of course, um, I think everybody's fine with just seeing a general Hello all. It's about all you can do. It's pretty, pretty difficult. Uh, JW Baseman is in. 
Um, I've been pronouncing his name wrong from the start, from his first ever mention here. Um, so it's nice to welcome you in, my friend, and I hope I've pronounced it right tonight. I had the 14-year-old a while back, he's saying, but recently enjoyed Bothy Batch 3. The, the Bothy that I have um, is Batch 4, and I still haven't got my head around that yet. I need to spend a bit more time with it. I've only just opened it. Um, Nigel Slynn is saying, not explored Aaron too much, but I have the 14, which is approaching the bottom. Unsure whether to replace or try another expression. So you're on the, the fence there, Nigel. Be interesting to know where you are, Nigel, and uh, what age the bottling is. Uh, Mark from Whiskey Whistle is in. Fantastic, Mark. Thanks for joining. Wonderful to see you in. Troy Forch is in as well, saying hello from Iowa. Hello to you, Troy, in Iowa. Cheers, my friend. And James is in from, you're in Texas, James, I think, aren't you? James Bricker is in saying, um, and having a chat. He's sitting at a table, it looks like, in the lounge with Josh, Josh Golliday. Josh, if you're in as well, I haven't spotted you yet, welcome in. And also Jason from Mash and Drum is in as well. You know, it's funny, and I'm talking about Jason from Mash and Drum there, it's, I kind of say this and for a while I was saying that it looks like a new whiskey YouTube channel is appearing every other week, but now it seems there's a quickening and a new channel is appearing every week. So I keep saying that you need, if you're going to start and you're going to share whiskey on YouTube, I encourage you to do it. It's quite a, it's, it's a very, very positive thing to do, more or less. It certainly has been for me. It's been a wonderful experience for me. However, there are lots and lots of negatives, and that's time um, and uh, the lack of traction, the lack of recognition, the lack of feedback, all of these things. And sometimes when you get the feedback, it's not what you wanted to hear. It's, it's difficult to hear. If you're starting it, make sure that whiskey is the passion front and center, because if you love whiskey and it's all about whiskey, sharing whiskey, then what happens to the channel in terms of stats and success and everything won't matter to you. It's just a medium for you to share your whiskey. Um, the other thing I would say is that you'd probably, if you do want to succeed, the quality needs to be quite high, probably even higher than, than I can achieve for in order for you to, to grab attention because we're all competing for viewing minutes now that's really quite limited. And I, say, I myself who love watching YouTube content, whiskey content on YouTube, I try to keep up as much as I can, but it's very, very difficult. So we start to pick and choose just the expressions that we're interested in, if it's expression reviews, just the topics that we're interested in, if it's topic uh, coverage that's happening. Um, so it's really difficult. But I found uh, a YouTube channel. Now, I saw this um, a couple of weeks ago, this channel. And, uh, and I thought, okay, that's good promise. That's quite nice. But let's see if he sticks at it. Let's see if he puts in more investment. Let's see if he's committed to this. And then Whiskey Jason in Germany, who's got his own YouTube channel. This is how awesome the whiskey community is. Whiskey Jason in Germany started to support this channel and made sure that I was aware of it. He sent me a direct message today to ask if I had found this channel. And it is Ben from Whiskey Geek. Um, he seems to be in the UK. I've never um, connected with Ben directly, but um, he started to put his own content together and his channel is called Simply Whiskey Geek. He was in here earlier, I'm not sure if he's in now, but I think channels like that and um, also my friend Alan from the Whiskey Friend down south, um, ex Glaswegian living in, in England, um, are putting effort into their channels. Everybody has an individual skill to bring. Everybody will find an audience. Um, but I think only time will tell if it's for you. It can be difficult. Skorg Smart is in. <laughs> Hello there, my friend. He's saying, where do you look if you want something even smokier than Brook Laddie Octomore? Asking for a friend. You know what? I don't find Brook Laddie Octomore to be the smokiest whiskies. I would say that most our bags are smokier than Octomores. Um, I would say that Lefroig's and even uh, Lagavulin's can be smokier. Um, I think Optimores can often surprise you by how accessible they are. Um, and that's just down to how they measure the PPM, right? Um, so I would say that if as long as you're kind of around the south coast of Isla, Arbeg, Lagville, and Lefroy, that area, they anything from those guys will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any Optimore, especially in a blind lineup. I think you might be surprised, um, you know, how different people, different palates um, interpret smokiness. I hope that helps. Um, 
Uh, the whiskey friend Alan is saying, well said, is all about the whiskey. Absolutely. It just needs to be seen as some way for you to share whiskey. And hopefully you get the chance um, to, to connect with uh, an audience, and to connect with some people about it. And then Alan is reminding me he's still Glaswegian. That's right, Alan. It never, we never, you know, take the guy out of Glasgow, right? Fantastic. And Gregor is saying, thanks, my bank balance taking a hit already. Gregor and I had a bit of an interaction as well this week, talking about just how much money we're spending just now in whiskey. And it's difficult because there's so much good whiskey out there. That's the point I want to make. And it's the reason that why we are here, so that we can select um, the better expressions, the ones that's worth kind of spending your money on. You might not agree with all the whiskies I'm going to share with you tonight, but it might inspire you to at least look at them or try them if you haven't already. Nigel is saying he's down the coast in Newcastle Roy and he's saying he bought it earlier this year online. So I think that was the Aaron 14 you're talking about. This one tonight is sitting a wee bit tight for me. It's my first dram. And also, it's a neck pour. Most whiskies come good as, as the level goes down. Most whiskies, in my experience, as I've talked about many times, get much better. Um, talking about this being my first dram tonight, I tried something this week, and it's it's a subject that I've been wrestling with, let's say, a little bit, and that's kind of how much uh, we are drinking, how much I'm drinking myself. I talk about how whiskey changed my relationship with alcohol, and I drink much, much less than I ever, ever did because I'm drinking for flavour and taste now. I'm drinking for the experience, I'm drinking for the engagement rather than just simply drinking. I think it's a completely different thing. So when I moved away from beers and wines, the volume of what I was drinking dropped significantly. Of course, the cost went up um, because even if we drop the quantity that we're drinking, we're drinking more or less more expensive things. But, but it then became a hobby and a passion. So it kind of changed my relationship with alcohol. And because the spirit is strong, it means that it's difficult. The high ABV often that we're drinking means it's difficult to just throw the thing back. You're not just drinking. You probably need to drink something soft or, or mix it or pour it over lots of ice or soda or something in order to get the, the kind of drink thing going. Um, so, you know, I, I think or I thought that I was drinking in a healthier way. But I decided to take an active step uh, recently to monitor and measure what I'm drinking. Because just like what we're spending or what we're eating or whatever it is, we probably are, there's more of it going on than we actually remember or recall. So I downloaded a little app and I installed an app and I'm kind of plugging in what I'm drinking. And that kind of encourages, it encourages me to slow down at least. Because if I want to drink these nice, nice whiskies, Something has to give a bit less beer, a bit less glasses of wine, maybe drink on less nights. Malt content is saying quality, not quantity. Absolutely, I agree fully. Um, and that's true of whiskey, it's true of it's true of everything in life. But I wonder how aware we are of what we're actually drinking. I haven't had anything to drink. Now, this is an exception since Friday night. Kevin Grant, who's in the chat tonight, maybe Craig Dolier is in, they were over here last Friday evening and we were sharing some whiskies and things. And that was Friday night last week. It was the last time I had anything to drink, beer, wine, whiskey, whatever, um, until I had a, a sip, literally one sip of a, a, a bottle at the Good Spirits Company in Glasgow today. And then I came home and the next, this is my second dram of Aaron 14, but they're very, very small pours I'm pouring. And I think what I'm gonna do is just be very mindful and plug it in to see what we're drinking, especially over this Christmas period. That's kind of why I wanted to have those dry nights running up to tonight, because I'm very aware that Christmas and the holidays, lots of socializing going on, lots of whiskey sharing, absolutely love it. There's nothing better, but it'd be nice to understand how much of it has been put away. I don't know about you, but when I have a bottle, I always tend to remember these few drams and I vividly remember these few drams but what happens to this section in the middle I have no idea 
There are whiskey elves in my house taking care of this for me. Now, I make a joke about that, but something is happening here. And yes, I'm sharing the whiskey, but even if I'm sharing it and sharing it a lot, half of that is me. And you've seen the recycled reviews, the, the videos that I do, right? So I'm getting through the whiskey. So I want to ask you, how much do you think you're getting through? Do you think it's probably a wee bit more than you would estimate? McAllen Finer, the doc, is saying, and I should mention he is the doc and he is a doctor, but he's not a medical doctor. He's saying no whiskey before 9 a.m. on Mondays. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you make a joke there, but I think it's very, very good to just kind of put in some limits and borders and things. But of course, all of that tends to go out the window during holiday period. The Mash and Drum Jason is saying, Roy sharing, hard to acquire whiskey with viewers is the best thing about the whiskey community. And my favorite part of having a channel. Good point, Jason. But what I want to say to you is that Everything I'm going to share, these top five whiskies that I've connected with in 2018, if I'm going to share these, it's not going to be a vicarious thing where I get to enjoy the whiskey and you just have to listen to it. I had to choose whiskies that I connected with this year that you can also buy. I don't mind them being special editions or limited release or things like that, but you have to be able to buy them. Not, none of this going to auctions and collectors and trading. And You should be able to go online, go to your local specialists, um, and, and buy these whiskies. It's called vaporization. Radek is saying it's called, good to see you, Radek. Nice to welcome you in. I'm going to, should I even, uh, Stiskel. Radek Stiskel, that's my best effort, my friend. Um, he's saying it's called vaporization. Yes, that's an excuse I've used in the past. Angels share. Okay, James Alsop is here as well. Good to see you, James. He's saying I've got a night off work after three night shifts. So obviously drive for those and join a dram now, though. Fantastic, James. Tell me what you've poured. Multi Haggis Muncher is in as well. Great name, isn't it? Multi Haggis Muncher. Not enough if you ask me, too much if you ask the wife. It's always the thing. So you know the truth is going to be somewhere between the two. Does that mean it's just about perfect? Yes. Certainly it's worth, and it's, it's boring to kind of bang on about it, right? But it's worth pausing and at least knowing where you're at. And even if you're over, I mean, the guidelines in the UK is ridiculous, 14 units. And I can't even consider it. If I go to a whiskey club on a Tuesday night and I, we have five, six, seven drams, eight drams, that's my 14 units pretty much taken care of for the week. So that's unrealistic. But whatever your intake is, it'd be good to be aware of it. That's the starting point. And what would we do? How would we enjoy this if it was dry? You know, at one point I was considering, ah, oh, maybe I should have a, a whiskey free, have an alcohol free, have a dry live stream one night and see how that goes, right? It's just, it's not the point of it. It's not why we're here. We're here to enjoy alcohol. But yes, that really dull statement about uh, responsibility and responsible drinking and things. Donald Rance is saying, I only do it on my days off and for select social occasions. Very good, healthy attitude to have. For me, it's slightly differently because it's such a passion and also a wee bit of research as well. I have so, so many whiskies. I want to get a handle on them. I want to understand them but I will try and take my time with it. So I'm not going through three, four drams on a, on a tasting night. I'm just having very, very small amounts and making it last as long as I can. Jez is in. Great to see you, Jez. He's saying, three days a week alcohol-free is the way I control my intake. It's a good way to be, Jez. I always wonder if that means that you cram in the other four days. Do you up what you're drinking in the four days? Because I've heard that that's a, a dynamic of having these kind of sober October Octobers and dry Julys and all of these things that you you build up this desire. And when you get back to allowing yourself to drink again, you have more than you would have been if you just continued drinking rather than having a dry spell. However, I do agree. And I've certainly enjoyed resetting over the last few days. Uh, Jimmy Legg is in. Jimmy is saying Octomore is more barbecue than smoke for me. Yeah, a lot of the Octomores do have that very, very uh, savoury, sweet, uh, almost barbecue-like, um, as some other uh, smoky whiskies genuinely do as well. There's one I'm going to share with you tonight that, that I got a bit of sweetness from it quite recently. Um, whether it's there tonight, who knows. Jeremy Sims is saying Aquavitae, it's that old chestnut of average 
averages in genetics and everyone handles it differently. Absolutely, alcohol, you can't measure, measure that by units for sure. There are some people that have no ill effects till much later. Jason Unsworth is saying, I appreciate the converse, conversation on responsibility. Thanks for giving a voice on this, an important topic for our community. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be the guy who's saying, watch what you're drinking and slow down and things. You know, we're all adults, we're responsible adults, and we get to drink what we want. It's one of the wonderful things about free, is having this that choice. It's just being aware. Let's, let's know the truth. Let's, how much are we actually drinking? So maybe I'll share it with you. After I've plugged in all everything I drink over Christmas and New Year into that app, I might choose to share it with you. But if it's embarrassing or more than I imagine, maybe I wouldn't share it. And that probably in itself tells a tale. Toby Field, fantastic to see you, Toby. He's saying, um, on a typical week, I try to keep three days free and 14 units over the other four. Wow, that's some discipline right there, Toby. It really is. It's a good effort. Um, because one measure of whiskey, okay, this, there's not a unit in this. It's probably a bit under a unit. It's maybe about half a unit there, that size. Um, but that's, um, it's not much whiskey. And if you have it over an hour or so, I mean, you're not even aware a lot of the time of any effect from the alcohol. Um, so it's all about how it's consumed. It's not just a matter of having days on and days off. It's... Um, it's how it's consumed. And if you're just having tiny, tiny sips and over a long, long time, surely that's different from sitting down and having three drams in an hour, right? Caskmate is saying, I, I, I pass by my collection more than I open or pour a dram. Having three small kids, same as me, same as me, Matthias, having three small kids, it's not every day that I'm in the mood for whiskey and black coffee it makes a good substitute. I just find water I'm just... I drink a lot of water these days. McAllen Finer is saying, sober October and dry July, what about months that don't work in terms of rhymes? That's true. It's true. And I think these things are, are designed just to kind of bring awareness. I'm not saying do them. I've never managed to do them. I've never even tried. Our baggy Andy is saying, fantastic to see you, Andy. He's saying, I tend not to drink in the week, as can be tasting all the time and doing the society nights. It has to be measured. Absolutely. When this is your hobby, drinking alcohol becomes integral. It's just part of it. It's not like you can go out and partake in your hobby and not drink. There, there, there is a non-alcoholic whiskey out there, but I've not seen it for sale and I'm not in a hurry to, I might maybe be curious to try it, but I'm not in a hurry to buy a bottle of it. Um, it's very interesting. I watched a BBC documentary with a, a presenter in the UK called uh, Adrian Giles, I think his name is, and he had, he he made this documentary based on his drinking habits and things in the UK. Um, and while I think he drank far, far, far more in a completely different way than I do, it did make me pause and give me a lot of food for thought uh, quite recently. Um, I, I just did a search on YouTube for it. Um, I can maybe link that video down below. Uh, link documentary. Trying to be good at housekeeping this weather. Okay. Let's go on to the second whiskey that I'm going to share with you. Um, I need to get through these before the quiz at the end tonight. I'll finish off this Aaron. The second whiskey is um, an example um, of a style that I love. I love this style of whiskey. And um, you see, the, just after I've washed that down with water there, the flavour that's left in my mouth after that Aaron is, is much more of what I recognise. I think it's just quite spicy and tight from the first neck pour, right? Um, the second whiskey I'm going to share with you, I love the style of whiskey. I absolutely love it. And I have shared it on a stream before. It's been sitting in this glass here. Really, really fruity. Really inviting, much richer experience. Cooked fruits, I would say. This is bourbon cast matured. I'm not suggesting it's like dark uh, cooked fruits. It's not like uh, uh, it's not like dates and figs and that kind of thing. It's kind of just cooked stewed fruit to me. Very malty. Lots of lovely, lovely rich cereal notes. 
and soft. This is 46% ABV, but on the nose, it's soft. And this bottle has been open for a long time. I bought this for the St. Patrick's Day live stream. So that's a clue to what's in the glass. So I know what I'm drinking here, but I recognize those notes and those flavors and I wonder if I would spot that as being, as being of its type. Probably not blind, it's really difficult. Um, but I'll share it with, with what, what, I'll share with you what it is. This is Powers and this is the John's Lane expression. Um, 12 years old, 46%. Now this is an Irish whiskey, so it's triple distilled, but this is pot still, single pot still Irish whiskey. So there's a proportion of unmalted as well as malted barley in here. And I love the green spot and yellow spot line. I noticed there's a red spot out now as well. I've not tried that one yet. I love the style. Redbreast is a fantastic whiskey. The 12, the Lustau, the Redbreast cast strength, all wonderful, rich, really nice whiskey experiences. This one is a bit more, the last time I had this, the notes I made on it was, oh, let's see if I'm getting it tonight. It has. As soon as I think about it, it's there. It's a kind of a ginger snap. There's a gingery spice to this. Um, maybe like a, maybe like a soft ginger, a honeyed ginger, that kind of thing, or those those little biscuits that I keep referring to that um, you get in the coffee shops and things. They're called Lotus in the UK Biscoff. Um, but that's kind of in this whiskey. This is, this is really a whiskey that you could sit with. I'm not suggesting it's a session dram, especially after what we've just talked about, session drinking. But you could you could have a dram of this and still not have fully explored it. You would want to go back and have a wee bit more, a wee bit more, a wee bit more. It's not got the, the waxy oiliness and the weight, I would say, that it's not got the full body of the green spots that I'm familiar with. It's slightly more, um, it's still there. It's still a nice textured whiskey, um, but it's slightly more, um, about the the honey and the spice on this, I would say. So there we go. Whiskey number two is not Scotch. It's a single pot still Irish whiskey. And probably, I think this is very, very easy to track down. I think you should be able to get this between 40 and 50 pounds. It's a 12 year old whiskey. Um, I don't know how much of it they sell. I think it's usually very, very available. Anytime I've wanted uh, to find it, I can find it. It's not expensive, and I think it's a wonderful example of its style. Different prospect from uh, the green spot, uh, different prospect even from the red breasts, um, but it's wonderful and worth your time. If you see it, have a wee bar pour. If you uh, in a shop or something, ask if they've got it open. I think it's a nice, enjoyable whiskey, but I think you only really come to know this when you sit down and spend some time with it. What's your reactions to that? Let's see what you're saying. Scroll back up the chat a wee bit. Uh, people started to guess. The whiskey friend Alan thought it was Red Breast. Uh, whiskey Radar thought it was a Glendalock. Well, I haven't tried any Glendalock yet. None. Be curious to see what those guys are turning out. Um, I know there was a there was a, a Mizunara cask that everybody was raving about. I didn't get close to it. Would be good to try. Malt Review has tried to guess Turmore. <laughs> good for you, Jason. Uh, Daniel Vermas is saying Red Breast. Uh, nobody guessed Yellow Spot and Green Spot started to. Mikey Hayes and Connor Strang is in as well. Fantastic guys. Wonderful to see you from the London Whiskey Club as well. Andy C is in and Eric Waite is in as well. Wonderful. Uh, Eric is saying Green Spot, Leoville, Barton. No, but that's one of my favourites. I've got it downstairs. It's an absolute cracker of a whiskey. 46%, whereas the standard Green Spot um, is just a 40% expression. Um, 
Uh, Bourbon Rice Scotch, good to see you. Saying good evening, Roy. I guess Ralph is setting a nice example. Work out hard in the gym and enjoy whiskey as well. Absolutely. And I think probably there's been a dawning on Ralphie as he's getting on in life that he needs to find an outlet in fitness. And Ralphie's character, obviously, he's found that gym thing and he's running with it and good for him. Donald Rance is saying, awesome. It's the spiciest of the pot stills. I agree with you. The spice is, the, especially when you sip it in contrast with a green spot, for example, the spice is obvious. The Leoville Barton, um, the low style from Redbreast has a wee bit of spice in it as well, but this has it built in as, at its core. Um, training Sierra in as well, fantastic guys, good to see you saying love red breast cast strength. Yeah, great value product as well, wonderful stuff. Uh, JW Baseman is saying, I've had a bottle of that, seem to recall I really enjoyed it, I do like a drop of Irish whiskey now and again. Absolutely. Um, I should grab a dropper actually. So I can reach this. Just when you mentioned a drop there, it put in my mind just to put a wee drop of water in this. Um, 46%, it takes it in my experience, it's quite nice. I mean, I've got through not too much of this, that's since I bought bought it for the St. Patrick's Day live stream back in March. Um, and I've shared it here and there. This did appear in one of the blind challenges, actually. I was so impressed by it that I thought it would be a good one um, to put into, I think it was Scott from the Scotch Test Dummies, his uh, blind challenge that I put it into. Um, and uh, I, won't, I won't give you any spoilers as to whether he was able to pick it or not or not. Um, Donald Rance has seen spot on with the ginger snap notes. Okay, so you, you get the same thing from it. It's that kind of, exactly that kind of thing. It's less of, less of a, yeah, I don't know. There's a kind of nice soft warmth to it. Uh, he's, he, Nigel Slynn is saying, just won an Aaron Tuscan wine cast matured sample in a charity auction. Sounds like an interesting dram. Absolutely. I've not even heard of that one, Nigel. Mikey Hayes saying, what's that whiskey called? My wife likes Biscoff biscuits and is curious about trying it. Mikey, it's the it's the Powers John's Lane. But that Biscoff thing, there are a lot of whiskies out there that I taste that in now. Once you label something in your mind, once it connects and it hits and you go, yes, I taste that, I taste that, you register it and you label it, you remember it. And that's kind of how you build up these this library of, of flavors and, and aromas. Um, so you start to kind of taste it in a lot of things which is why I'm nervous about doing a lot of tasting notes because I'm I'm very, very mindful that I'll start to just continually repeat myself with the same notes as soon as I detect it. Gregor is asking, are you a member of the SMWS weighing membership up? Yes, I am, Gregor, but it's it's value for me because I've got a partner bar here in Glasgow in the Bon Accord and a very, very short train journey through to Edinburgh, 45 minutes on a train and I can be, um, I can have access to the vaults and to Queen Street as, as well. So, it's 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 very good value for me, I would say, um, because I do use it a lot as a venue and a place to go. If you were just using it to buy whiskey, yes, spend some time weighing it up first. Try a few if you can. Most of the whiskies that I have tried from SMWS have been wonderful, way above average whiskies, and a couple of them, even the ones that I don't really connect with, don't love, they're still good whiskies. They're just maybe not. They're single cask. And that's the thing. Kilton Moose is saying, um, I'll get a sample of the Glendalock Mizunara 13 to you, mate. Scott, you just look out for me. Thank you so, so much. Didn't even know you had it. Or did I know that you had it? I think I might have done. Our bag is saying, I did live in pubs from 1970 till 86, beer and whiskey. Yes, yes. But you're, you're, I know that you're drinking in a much, much more measured way now, Andy. Uh, Radic is saying, what about the new bottling of Longmorn 16, Roy? Is it as good as the old one? Still a very good whiskey, the new bottling of the 16-year-old Longmorn. To my palate, it's not as good. It's not as good. Um, to somebody else's palate, um, they might pick it out as better. The Longmorn 16, the old Longmorn 16, was such a tra tra trajectory-shifting whiskey for me that it'll always be one of my whiskey loves it'll just it kind of taught me that there's there's just layers and layers and layers um and whiskey and if you spend time with it and you're patient with whiskey even whiskies that at first appear quite light and obvious in character have so much more to offer um the newer longhorn 16 is still delicious but i haven't bought a bottle of it it's much more expensive and uh it's a much richer softer experience um 
the original Long Run 16, or let's say the, the one in the green box that came out about, I don't know, 2012 or something, but it was available up until about 2015, 2016. Might have been available for longer than that, but that is the stuff that's wonderful. Uh, which do you prefer? Daniel is asking the vaults or kaleidoscope. Different things. Kaleidoscope's a nice kind of drop-in, casual place, quite a small venue, but they've got a great selection of auction purchased whiskey that Charlie McLean went out and sourced for them. Uh, there's still some of those left that I think you could do with recharging that stock. Um, so they, they have the SMWS offerings in there as well, and then they have the members bar upstairs at the kaleidoscope uh, at Queen Street. But I love the vaults. I love just kind of sitting next to the fireplace there and sinking into a big leather sofa. And then when you've been there long enough to get hungry, you just order some really nice food. Um, so I prefer the vaults. It's a nice place to go. Do you find a dried citrus peel note on the powers? Sure. Yes. By the mere power of suggestion, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Orange peel, dried orange peel. Mm. Absolutely. Who said that? Donald has seen that. Absolutely. It even fits in with that that whiff of bitterness on the finish as well. That kind of that kind of fresh bitter finish. Good spot, Donald. Thank you very much. Daniel is saying the new Long One Sixteen is magical with a drop of Ardbeg Ten. Good for you, Daniel. So you're just putting in a wee drop of Ardbeg Ten into the Long One. Nice idea. It looks like Tom R is in as well. Welsh Torres saying hello to Tom R. Tom, I haven't spotted you yet. Um, good to see you in. Um, nice to have you here again. Sven is in. Sven Murer. Hello to Frankfurt. Sven, good to see you. Nice to welcome you in here. It's the first time I've seen you. Magnus B, that looks like another new name, as well as Emery McGill. Emery, I've seen you before. Nice to welcome you back again. And uh, Mark Goins says, cheers, you all. I'll catch you on the replay. Have a great night, Aqua Vitae. Thank you so much for joining me, Mark. I know it's difficult with other commitments going on, especially at this super intense and busy time. Thanks for dropping by, and uh, I hope you have a great night yourself. Thank you very, very much. I want to ask everybody, did you pick up the blind challenge I did? Um... I wonder what your thoughts were. I filmed that with the view that I could watch it back myself and decide whether I would release it or not. So that was a different dynamic than the other blind challenges that I send out to the other channels. They're fully aware that what they're filming is gonna get cut and shared. Whereas I was in the very privileged position of knowing that I just didn't need to tell anyone that I'd done it. Um, but of course, after it, despite my lack of humility at the end, when I did get something right, I don't want to spoil it for you what I got right, I was kind of doing, uh, you know, but I was just so relieved. I was just so glad that I was able to get anything. Um, and they, I have to say, the adrenaline ride of that blind challenge was unexpected for me. Okay, it helped that Error had put in some fantastic stellar whiskies for me to try and um, but i put that out on saturday night and i did a live not a live stream i did a premiere so the videos goes live at a certain time and we're all in here chatting together i'm in the chat with you and we can have some real-time interaction and reaction it was a really good feature i could see it having appropriate um reasons to be used and i think that was a, a pretty good use of it i enjoyed hanging out with you guys and watching that on saturday night um, so wondering what you thought of it. Uh, I'm very, very keen to continue that blind challenge going for as long as people are willing to nominate other people and the, the nominees are willing to accept, of course. Drew is, of course, up next. R Russ Woodman is saying, cheers, Aquaviti, first time catching a live stream. Welcome in, Russ. Really good to have you here. Thanks for um, saying hello and tell me, where are you? Cast Strength is in saying the challenge video and format was amazing. Good. Um, so I tried to use a similar format as the other Aquavite challenges, but of course you can see that just by the very nature of how that came about, that it had to be a slightly a wee bit different. Um, Christina is in fantastic. Christina caught the blind taste in fantastic fun. You did. It was really nice to welcome you in there as well, and it's great to have you here joining us again. Are you home, Christina, or are you driving and listening? You must be home because you're typing, right? And Thomas saying, hi, Roy. I was listening to in my drive home on your study 
nights have you ever thought about using a spit bucket? Small spit samples, not so much wasted, but less for your body to process. The straight answer to that is no. I've used a spittoon at festivals, but not to spit, to kind of, to, to pour, um, not that I'm not enjoying the drams or whatever, it's just that, yeah, ones that I know that I'm at a festival and there's lots I want to taste and try and I don't want to drink too much. It, I just tip it into the spittoon, but I don't spit at home. I pour what I think I'm going to drink and then I drink it. The only time whiskey is wasted at home is if something happens and I forget it. Usually what I pour gets finished, Tom. It's a straight answer. Amy is saying it was great. Thank you very much, Amy. I'm glad that you joined in as well. Um, Jason Coates is saying you were raucous in victory, but a humble in defeat is the alternative, which is fine. Yes. But I think when you get something right, when you guess something, um, and it, you've got to remember that this is, this is not blind. And it's worth talking about blind challenges for a second, because if somebody takes a whiskey from your collection and pours it for you and gives it to you blind, it's not fully blind because you know it's got to exist in your collection to start with. Now, okay, you can argue that your collection's big enough that you're never likely to guess it, and I understand and agree with that, but it's not fully blind. The blind challenges that I send out are fully blind at the start, but at that point, they're not trying to guess the whiskey. All they're doing is trying to determine which one they like best to least. That's all that they're asked to do at that fully blind stage. And from then on in, through the challenges, they start to uncover clues and things to be in a position at the end where it's semi-blind. It's a match-up scenario that they're in. So it's not fully blind. It's, they've just simply got to match the expression with the dram. So it is different. And the, you know, the conversation started to go along the lines of following the we set rules and all of these kind of things, but this is it's not what that challenge is about. If you're testing the taster, Yes, you have to go through these structures and things to interrogate the whiskey properly and to try and fathom what the whiskey might be in a very kind of structured way. But if you're testing the whiskey, that's a completely different blind challenge dynamic. That's when you're kind of, you're kind of, you know, you, you're not, a black glass, for example, is redundant because you want to see the color of the whiskey to try and fathom it out and try and guess what it is. You want to, I don't know, I, I just I just feel that it's different. I think the, the Aquavite blind challenge was put together firstly to test the whiskies, so find out if cheaper whiskies are better or could possibly be better, which they have proved to have been than more expensive ones. That vintage, are they better than modern contemporary whiskies? Um, is world whiskies and non-Scotch better than Scotch or vice versa? That's kind of what it was meant to test. And then from then on in, it's just a bit of fun using the challenges and things to arrive at the blind, or sorry, the semi-blind setup at the end. So it is quite different. And I always encourage people to try blind tasting at home. If you don't know what you're drinking, I guarantee you will taste different things in the whiskey. It's quite amazing. I loved doing that. As I say, I loved the adrenaline rush and I loved the way I felt after it. The whiskies were wonderful. Thanks again to Era. Toby is saying, love the blind challenge. You weren't as bad on camera as you thought. I, I actually agree. I, after I'd edited it down and things, um, I was I was okay with my idiocy um, and the sound wasn't bad either. Yeah, I lost audio two thirds of the way through. It just uh, the audio I was using the the Mac to record the audio, and the Mac just powered down and went to sleep. So I lost the last third of the audio, and I had to use the camera audio for the end. But it's fine; you forget about it quickly, and it's not so bad that it's it's not like you're suffering to listen to it. Uh, Russ is saying he's in Missouri, in the central U.S. Welcome in, my friend. So you're probably six hours or five hours Missouri, six hours behind us. Not sure. Whiskey Throttle is saying, I have been trying to find the time, but I'm looking forward to watch the replay, but hope to talk with you about some Canadian samples. Okay, very intriguing. I know you've you've threatened in the past. It was a lot of fun. Do it again, <laughs> Casway is saying. Um, JW Basement is saying, blind tasting is fantastic. Highly recommend that we do blind tastings on Twitter, and it's always really interesting evening. Absolutely is. Do you find yourself getting caught out sometimes, John? I mean, it, I think that that... Even whiskies that you've been passionate about and saying, I love that, depending on the evening that you're sipping it, depending on what you're drinking it in contrast with, you can be caught out. 
Gregor is saying, you know how I feel about your blind challenge? It's got such long legs and is providing magical binding moment between myself and faraway friends this Christmas Eve. You're setting up your own blind challenge and I think you're using some of the similar formatting to the, the blind challenge that I do, Gregor. I'd be really curious to see how that works out. And Christina is saying, indeed, she is home and enjoying a longed for pour of our big 10. I would have probably guessed it had been our big 10. It's funny how we become fanboys. And that's another reason the blind tasting is good, because I think there's a comfort in being a fanboy, or in Christina's case, a fangirl or a fan guy or whatever you would want to call yourself. But there's a comfort in a brand that you get to know the brand, you get to enjoy it, you get to like it, and you're drawn to go back there, you're drawn to go back there, and you're drawn to go back, and just stop sometimes. That's very much a designed thing, and you are... I'm not going to suggest that you're weak, but potentially you are cutting out fabulous whiskey experiences by tying your loyalties to a particular brand. Yes, it's fun. I understand that. Yes, we do it throughout life. We do it with gadgets and we do it with cars and we do it with sports teams and all of this thing. And it's nice to have a bit of rivalry and things like that. And whiskey, I don't think it's a good thing. Blind challenges, especially when you have whiskies that you love are in there. Be prepared for whiskey taking your trousers down. It will, and it will challenge your loyalties to some brands often as well. And I hope that you have the ability to be humble when it happens, because it happens to me far too often. Emery McGill is saying, Aquaviti, most disappointing whiskey of May 2017 was Arbeg Grooves. While it was very Arbeggy up front, I was expecting the finish to be better. I didn't love it either, Emery. Um, I didn't buy an Arbeg Grooves. Um, I tried it. I was over there for Arbeg Day at the Fischiel Festival this year. There was lots of it on free pour. You could have as much as, it you, as you wanted. Um, it was not a bad whiskey. Um, I didn't love it. Tony Evans saying it was great. All the blinds are brilliant, fantastic. Oof, let's catch up with things here. Okay, let's go on to my third dram. How's the timing? Wow, an hour in, my goodness. At least three are going to need to be quite rapid fire. My third one is here, and I don't think many people would, would have much truck with this choice. It's just, it's almost an obvious choice, but it's perhaps so obvious that I don't often talk about it too much. It's a scotch. And um, yes, it's generally and widely available. Sometimes it can disappear and be difficult um, to, to get a hold of, especially if you're in the UK or Scotland, let's say. Um, even their standard entry level product went out of stock at the end of last year, start of this year. Um, but I knew this whiskey. I mean, I haven't been a long-term fan of this whiskey. I found it a wee bit difficult let's say when I first got into whiskey, because there are some unique flavours in there generally, but and I got into it. And I, exactly a year ago, it was, it was Christmas time. My neighbour across the road, Pat, he was in this evening just before I went live. He dropped in to say hello, and he left me some tasty homemade shortbread. Thank you very much, Pat. I was over at Pat's house, and uh, he just poured a whiskey for me and gave it to me. It was his Christmas bottle, a bottle that he'd been gifted for Christmas. And it was this. And I smelled it. Oh, that smells nice. I'm really interested. And I left it in the glass for a while. Then I sipped it. And I was like, wow, what is this? What is this? And then as, as I went through, I kind of guessed what it was. There's a very, very unique flavor to it that kind of tells you what it is. Um, but uh, his wife, uh, who bought it for him, told me what it was, what it was and confirmed my suspicions. But I was going to guess it was its 15-year-old equivalent. This is 10 years old. So I've given you lots of clues to what this whiskey is. And it's a peach. <laughs> Ten-year-old whiskey. Amazing. It's got the very unique, distinct flavour of the distillery in there. Boiled sweets, sugary boiled sweets in there as well. 
some bitterness, lots of citrus, lots of fruit. If there's smoke and peat in this, and I believe that there is, it's not always obvious to me. It's only when there's only a little, little drop left in the, in the glass that you pick up some smoke. It's not very obvious to smoke for me. Uh, so we've got Louis Ochoa is in, a fantastic guest, Louis. Christine Deems has guessed it as well. Nigel Slynn has also guessed it. it, is indeed. Oh, Daniel Vermas had guessed it, looks like first guessing, yes, indeed. This is Springbank, Springbank 10. I have all the Springbanks. I've got the 10, I've got the 12 cast strength, um, two batches of the 12 cast strength. I've got the 14 year old Bourbonwood, that's not opened yet though. Um, I've got a couple of local barleys, I've got the 15, I've got the 18. All of the Springbank expressions, even if you don't enjoy them, if you don't like it, because there is a unique flavor element in there, you can't deny that the quality of the spirit the engagement is really, really top class. It's front and center, full of character, full of quality, and it's very, very rare that you'll pick up a Springbank and not like it. It happened to me this year. One of my least or biggest letdowns this year was from Springbank. But I know that a lot of people that love Springbank Loved the whiskey that I didn't like, and it was a that was the Sherry Cask Long or the fourteen year old this year. It was just far too sulfury. It was li literally licking a box of matches. Um, but lots of people that like that flavour, that characteristic, that really really heavy, funky, musty flavour, loved that whiskey. It was very very dirty Springbank. Um, it wasn't it wasn't my favourite. Um, the Longer Red I'm talking about, by the way. Um, a jumping whale, fantastic to see you saying, I will try Springbank again. So is that perhaps something that you tried in the past and didn't like very much? Magnus B is saying, hi Magnus, he's saying, I haven't had a Springbank 10 yet, only 15, is it really not peaty? Well, it depends because some people are much more sensitive to peat and smoke. I drink so much peaty whiskey now that I really need to probably take a break from it for a while, but I'm going to wait till next year before I do that, um, in order to kind of recalibrate things and make me more sensitized to Pete again, because I really don't detect it in this at all. But maybe a, a, a wisp of it, I would have to literally nose it along, alongside something that I know. No, I just don't, I don't pick it up. I'm just having too many high, heavily peated whiskies to pick it up. Um, Aquavite, more people complained about that long roll. I think it was just a very extreme example of its style. Daniel, Nigel Slynn just found the local Barley 9 for retail at my local specialist, pulled the trigger, even though I couldn't really justify the price even at RRP. It was 95 pounds, I think I paid for it this year, 1995, can't remember. Um, thanks to Scott Monroe, he managed to track one down for myself and the Alchemist. Um, and Yes, but you have to understand that that's, that's a very, very intensive process to deliver that product, that, that control of, of making that spe those specific batches of that very specific barley. In every stage of the process, it's got to be traced and tracked. Uh, the, everything about it in order for them to bring, which is, which is a very, very small batch expression. The original one was 16, I think, then it was 11, then, sorry, I'm not saying the original, three years ago it was 16, then it was 11, last year was 10, um, and this year is a nine-year-old. So it's getting a wee bit younger as well, but last year's the 10-year-old, um, the 16 was fantastic, really, really fantastic. I never owned it, um, but the 10-year-old, I managed to get a, a, the opportunity to buy a 10-year-old, and it's like spiced butter. It's a wonderful whiskey. The texture is there, the flavor is there. It's very, very subtle and then it's not and then it flashes and then it flickers and it's one to sit and spend time with. It's not the type of whiskey that you can have a conversation over. The whiskey constantly is 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 asking for your attention and it deserves it. I think for 40, 45 pounds, I know it's a 10 year old, you might consider that that, that is uh, expensive for a 10 year old. You can get it under 40 pounds, I guess. But for its quality, we're measuring rather than age. 
Um, and I think this is wonderful value and it's worthy of anybody sitting down and spending some time with it. I mean, look at the label. It doesn't even care that it, that it looks like this, right? Fantastic whiskey. I don't know what the thoughts are on that one. Um, I will try to find Jason Whiskey Wise is in. Fantastic, Jason. Good to see you. I hope you're feeling okay this evening and it's great to welcome you in. Um, it's wonderful to think that you might actually be here to help me out with the quiz tonight. Um, and he's apologising for his lateness. Don't worry about it. Nigel's line is in eighty two ninety nine, so can't complain really. That's a very good price, Nigel. Wow. Um, I think that's fair enough. And have I tried the nine year old? I don't even remember trying it. I don't remember trying it. Um, Josh is saying, isn't that incredible how you can become desensitized to flavor and smell? Some find to be overwhelming. Yes. I mean, I'm not saying I don't taste it at all. I mean, it's just that I, I, if, I, if you drink so many PT whiskeys, especially at this time of year, right, you're reaching for it. You start to just taste immediately past it. It becomes an automatic thing. And then if there's somebody else sitting next to you, they can smell the smoke from where they are sat. It can be a, it can be a big surprise. Like I say tonight, I'm sure that I could pick this up in a blind and say, "Yep, yeah, spring bank," but that's not how blind tasting works. But there are things that I expect to smell in this spring bank ten that I'm clearly smelling tonight and tasting. Cracking whiskey, very, very worthy of your time. Ah, McAllen Fine and Rare is reminding me that I, I tried it at Inter Whiskey. <laughs> thank you, Doc. Thank you very, very much. Cask me, you star. Matthias, thank you very much. He's saying, just for the hell of it, you whiskey Obi-Wan. See, that's, that's curious. I guarantee you there are dozens in this lounge tonight that are more worthy of the Obi-Wan title than I am. But I'll thank you graciously for your donation and your kind words, Matthias. And I'll raise this dram number four and uh, let you know why I've picked this to say cheers. So I've just gone from a 46% ABV spring bank, lots going on, lots of obvious flavors, into this, which is the exact same ABV, but tastes much softer. Joe Prester's, Joe, sorry, Joe Prestera is in. He's saying, Aquavita, if I only have one peated whiskey in a night, I can't have another one. If I have one peated whiskey in a night, I can't have another one. I understand, Joe. Um, nice to see you in, by the way. I think that's a new name. Welcome in. I think that uh, for some people, it's a, it's a divisive thing. Some people enjoy it and say, nah, I've had enough. Like you, Joe, I think. But other people get their hooks into Pete. They find it difficult to leave alone. And I can, I kind of switch backwards and forwards. I can be like that. I, I have suffered from that in the, in the past at the hands of Lagavulin. I just got into peated whiskey so much that I found everything else boring for a long time. And I think that was a, a mistake. And it's nice to step back now and again and kind of recalibrate your perspective again. Uh, Tom Harris saying, are you aware of any independent bottles of Springbank? Very, very rare, Tom. It, they do exist. There was a time that Springbank had to trade casks just like anyone else, but it's very, very rare nowadays. Springbank can sell everything that they're making and a hell of a lot more. So it's very rare for any of the stock to turn up um, on the through brokerage or for independent bottling. Some private casks. Uh, Toby Field is saying, uh, I could see Roy in Obi-Wan's robe. Mm. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't own such a thing. It would be cool though. I guess I'm getting to that age now that I'm more of an Obi-Wan than anything else, right? Gregor is saying, for me, the best 10 year old in the market are the Springbank 10 and Benromac 10. I would challenge uh, I would it would I would be difficult for me to challenge you, Gregor. I would say that you're absolutely right with both of those. Benromac 10 um, is worthy of a shout out. 
but it's not one that I connected with or reconnected with this year. Springbank 10 I came back to because of that moment that I had uh, with my neighbour at Christmas time last year. And uh, I don't think there was a week had passed before I'd bought myself a bottle of Springbank 10 to put back in the cabinet again, and I'm very glad I did. Okay, so Springbank uh, was number three. Let's, let's, just before I tell you what number four is, I'm going to show you some of the also-rans, some of the ones that I nearly put in, ones that I'm really loving, that I struggled to get it down to five to share with you tonight. Um, but at the end of the day, these kind of missed out for some reasons. Stranahan's. This is an American uh, malt whiskey. This is their Diamond Peak. It's 47% ABV, I think. Yep, 47. And this is really, it is an American whiskey still. It's very, very sweet and toffee, rich caramel and things. There's a nice dose of spice in this as well. And I find this a wonderful whiskey that you can sit with and really enjoy. Um, really cool little kind of jigger pouring cap as well. Very, very tough to open this the first time we opened it. This was gifted to me by my friend Bill, Whiskey Disciple Bill in California. He was in the Isla video and he brought this across for me. I think it's tough to get your hands on in the UK, but this has been a wonderful American whiskey for me. And I'm gradually understanding more about American whiskey the more that I try. I'm tasting past that kind of rich, sickly sweetness that you can discover with American whiskies and bourbons and things if you come from the Scotch angle. Um, and this is helping me to do that. This is a great whiskey and I thought about including this tonight. Another one, fantastic distillery, doing great things generally as a producer. They're doing great things at Glen Scotia. They're doing great things at, at Loch Lomond as well. This is very, very good value early 30s, 35 pounds, 12 year old, uh, wonderfully well presented as well. It tells you that it's non-chill filtered on a bottle. It has the age statement. They present it at 46% ABV as well. And if you're looking for character in whiskey, this brings it by the bag. Sometimes if this was poured for you blind, I think you'd be staring at it wondering what it is. It's got lots of that rich, earthy sourness that we love to taste in the spring banks and the bin Romax and maybe Bemores of old and things. This has got bags and bags of character. And if you find yourself disconnected from Loch Lomond, I bet it's because you've had one of these really cheap price point type Loch Lomonds that this distillery used to be famous for. It's not that kind of distillery anymore. Yes, there are still cheap, difficult to like Loch Lomond still occupying shelf space out there. That's not the Loch Lomond I'm talking about. This is the Loch Lomond 12. And I know that there are older expressions out there that everybody is raving about as well. These guys are proving that they can make fantastic whiskey. But it didn't make it into the list. It was nearly in there. And this one, I can't believe that there isn't going to be a Glen Goyne in the list. There isn't a Glen Goyne here tonight. It had to make room for something else. Glengoyne has been a staple for me. It's been one that's kind of constantly there. And while I can argue that I reconnected with the 21 again this year, it isn't really a 2018 whiskey for me, but almost. Glengoyne's just always been there and in the background. This 21-year-old was on offer, and I managed to get this for significantly less than £100. But even if you pay retail for this, you're looking at 110 120 tops, that kind of thing. It's a 21-year-old whiskey. Almost every drop in this bottle is ex Oloroso as well, exclusively Oloroso. Um, bit of a sherry bomb. They are putting a wee bit of ex bourbon in this now, but it's minuscule. It's a tiny amount. Um, this is very much still a sherry bomb. 43%. If you want to know why it's presented at 43%, maybe you want to refer back to the, the live stream I did last week with Scott Adamson from Tomatin. Um, there's a reason for it. There's a reason that it's styled that way. Um, this is wonderful whiskey, high quality stuff. Everything Glen Goyne do is classy. It's a very elegant, a very clean product when they do a sherry style and a very elegant, engaging, malty product um, when they do a uh, more kind of bourbon uh, matured style, like in the, like for example, the 12 year old uh, and the 15. Um, I would say that, that um, on a value front, I'm 
often amazed that they can do it for the prices that they do. The 18 year old is about 75, 80 pounds. Like I say, the 21, just over a hundred. Um, this should have been in anybody's top five list for anything at that kind of price. But I couldn't put it in tonight because it was more of, this is an always in the cabinet style of whiskey. So Glen Goyne wasn't included. Which brings me to the one I did include. And I want to keep this off camera just now because I could have included this one. I have included this one. So I'm just showing you the tops. You probably have guessed what it is already. I'm just going to grab that chat. <laughs> Donald Ransom saying the lot 40 cast strength, lot 45. Look, it's got to be available product, Donald. It's got to be something I can actually get my hands on and that lot 40 cast strength is not that. Lock Lomond are doing some great things, says JW Bass when he's saying, and the single cask Chardonnay yeast is amazing, probably my whiskey of the year. Wow. There's a whiskey maker there that I would love to connect with. Uh, Michael, he's, I think that he's responsible for this transformation that we're witnessing coming out of Loch Lomond and Glen Scotia. It would be very curious to get his input. And I also could have included this, just to try and show the top of that here. There are three here. There's a 12-year-old, a 15-year-old, and an 18-year-old. I could have picked any of these to fit into this slot because they're very, very good examples of their style. And they're still very good value. And they are delicious whiskies to pour for yourself, to pour for visitors. And if you poured it for visitors, they would feel looked after. Glendronic. This is a 12, the 18 Allardyce, fabulous, very extreme example of its style. And the one I've chosen is the 15. Now I've said that it's got to be available. This is difficult to get right now, but this is their new release. This is their 2018 release that, re that re replaced the one that they, they discontinued in 2016, I think. Um, so while this is out of stock now, this will come back into stock again pretty soon. It's difficult. You will find it here and there in retail. This is core product. It's not a flash release. You will be able to buy this again. Yes, it's not the same as the old one. Absolutely. It's a bit different in style. This is using PX in there as well. But as a product, 15-year-olds for that price and this engagement, it's damn good. Now, it wasn't long ago I opened this on a stream and I've got through a fair amount of this and I've shared a little bit of it, but not too much. It's me that's drinking this and enjoying it. And as I sip it tonight, I see why. Sometimes sherry style of whiskey is what, like a bit like peated, like we've been talking about, you can fall away from it. This would get me back into sherry. I think it's very well done. And I have to say, I had my cynical head on before they released this, and I didn't think they were going to be able to achieve something as nice as this, as a release. So my number four is Gondronic 15 Revival. But honestly, if you can't get it, the 12-year-old, admittedly 43%, but there's a reason for that. I'll refer you back to the video with Scott from Tomatin last week. Um, is 43% but still wonderful whiskey, still very much sherry, sherry in its style, a 12 year old version. The 18 year old Allardyce is wonderfully deep and rich and soft, 46% um, ABV, and it's still about 80 or 90 pounds, that kind of price for an 18 year old sherry bomb. Connor is saying he was underwhelmed by the new 15. The 18 is the one to go for. I think uh, the old 15 was much closer to the the 18, the new 15 is a slightly slight departure for that for obvious, obvious reasons. But I think it's still a wonderful, wonderful uh, whiskey. Simon Ray is saying, thanks for the great cover coverage. Enjoy an Xmas dram. Thank you very, very much, Simon. Thank you for your virtual dram. And I'll raise a wee glass of Golden Dronic 15 Revival to you, Simon. I wonder how you've been feeling about these weekly V pubs. And I wonder how you're feeling about the guests, because I've lined up kind of three collaborations in a row. Um, it takes effort to do these things and trying to work out the timings and uh, to work out the tech and things in advance. Not too much. It's not a big deal. 
but for me, it's a lot easier just to kind of turn up on my own. There's a bit more pressure on me to have content, but as you can tell, I seem to be able to find way things to talk about. Um, but it's been interesting to get your feedback, whether um, you would like to continue a mix of guests and solo nights. Um, obviously, when it's a solo night, I'm able to interact with you guys a lot more as well, or whether you would uh, prefer me to go in a particular direction. I think the weekly live streams is something that I would probably be reluctant to continue for next year. I think I was happy with the balance of the uh, twice a month live streams, and I think I will be switching back to that next year. Just feels a bit more right in terms of timing, um, in terms of uh, commitment from me, in terms of uh, building up an appetite in between streams that people actually feel like they want to join. Um, I think it's right because we're all like our time is limited and we're all competing for viewing minutes. I would like to have you here all the time, of course. I would like to sit with you here every week, but I think it's nice to find balance in things. Emery is saying, what is everyone's thought on the Glen Scotia 15? I loved it. I tell you what though, sip it with something sweet or soft and tell me if you don't get smoked meat, specifically smoked salmon from that. When I was at a club night, we picked out Scott from the club night he picked out smoked salmon and everybody got it. And then I was somewhere else completely unrelated, and I wish I could remember, and somebody else picked out smoked salmon as a tasting note as well on Glen Scotia 15. Fantastic dram, one of Ralphie's favourites as well. Whiskey Throttle is saying, guests were great, Captain 3D. Yeah, Phil and Deepa were fantastic guests, very popular guests, lots of feedback to say that they enjoyed them. Actually, all my guests, Ben from Scotch Malt Whiskey Society three weeks ago, um, Phil and Deepa, and even last week, Scott from Tomat, and everybody is feeding back that they were good guests. And it's that idea that I just, it'd be great to just have people on that can bring something fun, bring a value, bring something interesting. Um, because if I wanted a collaboration with people who had something to sell, uh, a blog or a channel to promote, or, uh, you know, it would be easy. I, I would literally be able to put out multiple streams a week. But it has to be, it has to fit with a theme. It has to be something that's valuable uh, to the community and something that I'm interested in as well. Iladi is saying weekly or bi-weekly is okay. Fantastic, Rombo. So you'd be... I think I think people struggle when it's weekly, if I'm honest. Um, Toby is saying I'd struggle to fit them in weekly normally. Uh, uh, I lady is again back saying my wife would prefer bi-weekly. <laughs> I understand completely. We are aligned, Ron about Daniel is saying weekly shows were great. Mix is good. Two a month would be better for, for you. Thanks for thinking of me, Daniel. Um, but yeah, I just it's kind of building up the desire to bring a theme and bring content, things that I want to talk about as well. Gregor is saying your guest selection and approach to content is solid. No ambassadors for his, uh, ambassador's sake. For example, absolutely, Gregor, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, Tom is saying, I like when you have guests, but just as you said, when so interact with us much more. And and I think that's what people, when I used to, when I watch other live streams, I love that interaction. I love talking to other people in the lounge and I like talking to the, the people that are on the show and getting the feedback. It almost feels like a kind of a conversational dynamic. Sevi is in, fantastic, the alchemist is saying, woo, evening everybody, all shopping and deliveries done and finally home for a spot of tea and probably just in time to figure out what my last of the five drams are, Sevi, and for the quiz as well. You've been doing really good and the quizzes recently. Everwind is saying he loves the V-pubs, but with all the whiskey tubers I'm following these days, it adds up. Absolutely, Everwind, you get it. At some point, I might not have a real life other than work. Great job, I enjoy the company. I do too. And I think that you, especially depending on how busy your life is and what your interests are and what you're up to and what you're doing, you know, you're maybe not going to get out or you're far away from the, where the social activity is. And I think that this is a, a reasonable and interesting substitute, especially when it's about a subject that you're passionate about. Whiskey Wolf has just sent me a dram. Rolf, my friend, thank you very much. He's saying, thanks Roy for hosting these awesome V-pubs all December. Merry Christmas. Thank you very, very much, Rolf, my friend. I hope that 2019 can bring you back to these shores. Cheers, my friend. That was the idea of the, the December streams. So, Glendronach is, how can anybody, I appreciate 
that it's not what the old one was, but it was never ever going to be. It's very, very good. This is going to end up in a blind, somebody's blind lineup soon. Uh, Captain 3D is actually in, Phil is in, fantastic to see you. He's just released a, an Ardbeg revisit to his original video and he's done one on Glenn Farkless as well. And if you're ever, ever curious about blind tasting, watch the Glenn Farkless one and see how crazy it is. And then if you judge them on it, how confused they got, do it yourself. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Well, content is saying I can only get to them on summer holidays. Of course, you're in Australia. Of course, my friend, Christmas time. So maybe ramp up the schedule every every Christmas, Roy. <laughs> it works for you. Well, that's the thing. If I take a summer holiday off, you know, July and August, I, I think through July, August, September, I did about three or four streams, maybe over three months. So I really kind of cut back to, and I always said that I would have that break in the summer. So if I'm doing that, I kind of feel like I need to pay back in the winter time. I don't feel like I need to pay back. That's not fair, but I think it makes sense. And I think uh, uh, certainly this time I was up for doing it. There's one more to go next week on the 27th, two days after Christmas. I I only charge patrons for product that I actually do. I don't do per month. It's per, per, per video, per creation that goes out. So when I take a break in the summer as well, there's, they don't pay for me disappearing. I have no guilt about going off and taking a summer holiday. Um, Donald is saying, whenever you have the time, that's our top drams that you want to try in 2019. There is a lot. But I have to be honest, Donald, the amount of money I've been spending recently, there would be shame in me finding new drams to go out and find. Have I missed? I have. I've missed a drama. In. Somebody has bought me a dram and I've missed it or I've just not got to it yet. Somebody has given me £10. It's Kieran, of course. I could have guessed it was you, Kieran. He's saying Merry Christmas, mate. Don't need to say anything more. Kieran, you star. You're always super generous and support me. Thank you very, very much, my friend. Thank you for your dram. I like this whiskey. I really like it. Let's show you, before we move on to the quiz then, we've got 30 minutes left before I, in order for me to get this in under the two hour mark. Um, let's share with you what the last drama is. Let's remind you as well that the Scotch for Dummies will be doing a live stream later tonight. So if you're on that time zone, catch the S4Ds. They're doing a, a really cool overview of the Game of Thrones Diageo releases right now. They've managed to get their hands on those. Um, way ahead of us in the UK. It's not released in, in the UK until I think February, the Game of Thrones stuff. There is a few in the, the lineup that I'm interested in, the Klein Leash, the Lagaville and the Oban, for example. I would like to um, understand what they are and uh, and try them. Um, but those guys are doing that and they'll probably be talking about that in their live stream later tonight as well. Um, I would also like to shout out uh, Gustav from the Whiskey Couch in South Africa. He was kind enough to send me two South African whiskies and you'll see them sitting here just behind me. Um, he also sent something no nonsense whiskey. Vin and Vin and I were trying to work out if there's any opportunity for us in the coming weeks to do a collaboration where we could open those and taste those together. Um, but I've had a wee sniff and, a, and a, just a tiny sip out of both of those and they already have intrigued me. So I would be keen to try those South African whiskies sent to me from Gustav at the Whiskey, at the whiskey Couch channel. For those of you that know Gustav, he does lots of work um, uh, uh, tasting lots and lots of whiskeys. He's got a fantastic collection. But he also does lots of food pairings as well. Quite interesting. Tom Harris saying, with calling attention to responsible consumption, are you concerned about having too many virtual drams? Well, I poured these five drams out in advance. And there were small drams, Tom. There were half pours, I would say. That's what I intend to drink tonight. So hopefully these virtual drams... Yes, I'll raise a glass and just have a sip. But I hope that they're converted into drums at some point. Sparingly, perhaps. <laughs> Daniel is saying, I heard March. Uh, what did I what did what did I commit to for March? Oops. I'm not sure what you mean, Daniel. Have I committed to something? Whiskey Whistle Mark is saying, time to park, my friends, no problem. Next was shopping, wish me luck. Cheers, Roy. Cheers, Mark, and thank you very much for stopping by. It was nice to have you while you were here. 
And Tom is saying, I was making a bad joke about the super chat drams. Yes, don't worry. Don't worry about it. But I think I think it is, and I think I've said enough about the responsible drinking. I think I've kind of got the message across. And also just the idea that it's it's on my mind. And it's certainly been on my mind recently with the run up to Christmas and things. What I should be doing is, is worrying more about the money I've been spending on whiskey. Hmm. Maybe have a, a break in the new year from that. Keith Corbett saying, say hi to your kittens, Brora and Barley. The other one is Keith. My son is home from uni and brought my grand kitty, Gouda. Fantastic. Keith, say hello to Gouda right back. Yeah, the cats have settled in really, really well. Nice spirits to have around the house, I have to say. Very gentle, very tame, very friendly little guys. And just starting to fit their names, I would say. Um... And Whiskey Throttle is saying, don't ask about money here. Absolutely right. Okay, my last dram of the five is a peated dram. Now, I didn't force myself to put a peated dram in here. I did not. Um, I was okay with having five drams without a peated one being in there. But this one struck me for a few reasons. And um, this is a distillery that I first tried way back in 2010. Um, at that time, they had only, they didn't have much out there available. So it was maybe the second release I think I tried. And it was while I was out in Isla. Um, so you've probably guessed what the distillery is already. And uh, I thought it was okay. I thought it was a nice enough whiskey. And I tried some over the years. Some were really, really good. Some were okay. But I've got a bottle downstairs that I really don't get on with at all. Fourth edition, 100% Isla. Don't love it. But this one has come alive. My God, what a whiskey this is. It's difficult to call an Isla whiskey clean. This, for an Isla peated whiskey, is clean on the nose. Super fresh, like sea air, just a blast of sea air. Yes, there is peat and smoke there, but just really, really clean, jumping out the, the glass. Mm. That's what I was hoping for, that texture. Lovely texture. Lovely whiskey. Lovely whiskey. They've become a distillery that have shown that they can make damn fine product. This is the eight-year-old 2009 vintage. 46% presentation. Of course, it's Colhoman, supernatural. As much as, as natural as they can possibly be, they're even malting a huge percentage of their own barley requirements nowadays. Just wonderful, wonderful stuff. And that I'm very glad about because the initial releases could be a wee bit hit and miss. Thomas seen jumping out of the glasses like the fish in the video, right? Yeah, the, the Magic of Isla video where we have the, the cameo appearance from the jumping fish, if you've not seen that. Uh, Donald thought I was going to say a Kalila or Bamor, but no, it's a Kilhoman. Um, Marku, fantastic Marku, good to see you. He got it right. He said Kilhoman. I lad, he got it. Jason Whiskey Wise guessed it as well. Um, Keith Corbett guessed it. And Alan, the whiskey friend, guessed it as well. Even Whiskey Radar, wow. Some people thought Lagavulin was going to make an appearance. Listen, Lagavulin will always have a place in my heart, but it's never going to command my full attention when it comes to Isla whiskies. There's amazing things out there that you can taste from all the distilleries, but you just have to be open-minded and discover it. And this one is an absolute cracker. Now, this is an eight-year-old whiskey, and I think this is about... I think it's about 70 pounds of that order, okay? So it's not a cheap eight-year-old whiskey. But you're going to forgive this. You can't compare this to Lagavulin 8 because the production style, the distillery, the scale of everything that they do is completely different. And it's it's kind of interesting now that we're starting to see whiskey of this age. Kilhoman has even managed to put out a 12-year-old recently. It's really cool that we're able to see older, mature product from Kilhoman now and see what they're actually able to make. This is a cracker. And I think, I've not done it yet, but maybe the Whiskey Rev is coming down to see me at New Year over Christmas holidays. He's coming down to stay for a couple of nights. Maybe one of the activities that we'll get up to is maybe do a wee blind flight. It'd be nice to do a peated one. Um, if I think if I put this in here, 
in that blind flight, sorry, I think if I slipped it in, I think it would do very, very well. It's not cask strength. It doesn't have the same power or hit as if it was cask strength. It's 46%. This is kind of very, very available part of their core range now, 46% um, presentation, but it's, there's plenty engagement in there. Saltier than I've, I've tasted, but maybe it's on the back of the Glendronic. I'm getting that real, really salty tonight. Great texture, just wonderful texture, whiskey. So if we talk about that idea uh, when we, earlier we were talking about the Octomores being super peaty and smoky, this will go up. This this will go toe to toe with an Octomore. Fantastic stuff. Maybe it's difficult to spend the money on it because it's a wee bit more expensive. But I, if you, if this is your bag, if you like this style of whiskey, this little bottle here will not let you down. Spend your 65, 70 quid on it. Um, and if you don't like it, talk to me, I'll buy it back off you. It's really, really good. Bill is on. Bill, my friend, how are you? Bill is in here as Bill tonight, and uh, he's normally known, occasionally known as the Whiskey Disciple, and he appeared on Isla Video with me. Bill, it's wonderful to see you. I did pick up your Glengoyne Teapot Dram. It's sitting here waiting for you. I'll admit the Teapot Dram this year, this batch six, is sitting a wee bit higher than batch five in terms of uh, spice and grip. It's a bit more prickly. It's not as soft and accessible as the, as the batch five. Um, but as the bottle's going down, I'm starting to understand it more and more and more. It's still got a lot to give up, that teapot dram. Absolutely loving it. It's just a stellar example of its style. Wonderful stuff. Uh, Gregor is asking me if I tried the 100% Isla 8th release, release. Sorry, your thoughts. I haven't yet, Gregor. Um, but I bet, you it's, I bet you it's bloody good. I bet you it's very good. Okay, Jason... Are we ready to kick the quiz off? Do you think we're going to be able to get the get through the quiz before we um before we hit the two hours tonight? Probably not. And what would be embarrassing about that is that I don't have any guest tonight. Sid Martin is not in tonight. He's out at his Christmas party, can't participate. But as a cheeky message on Facebook, he put in 10 answers in advance to guess how he would score on the quiz. So Sid is going to be here in spirit. He's going to take part in the quiz tonight. And, and if I remember, please try and remind me, I'm going to keep Sid Martin's score. I've written down 1 to 10 and A, B, C, D next to his, his guesses. And I'll keep his score and see how he gets on tonight. Sid Martin, you're very much still playing the quiz. But this is a cool experiment because it's a bit like that uh, analogy I use that it's, you know, it's, it's a multiple choice. It's one out of three, 33% chance. So even a chimpanzee has a good opportunity of scoring 33% or a third, a three or a four out of 10. So let's see how Sid gets on, even though he's having a nice time at his Christmas party. Fantastic. Let's see about any other housekeeping to do. Probably I've forgotten lots of things. There is another live stream coming a week from tonight. It'll be the last live stream, the last weekly live streams going through December. And I am trying to encourage the Whiskey Rev to do a stream with me. That may end up being a patron-only stream, depending on how he's feeling, how we're feeling, what time constraints we've got, when that's going to be. It's not going to be a VPUB. It won't be scheduled on a Thursday night like tonight. It'll be an ad hoc thing. I'll try and let you know about it in advance. Um, and if it's patrons only, I'll obviously let my patrons know in advance. Um, but but the I would like the Whiskey Rev and I to get together on a stream and just kind of share a relationship, share a uh, a friendship and things on 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 a live. Dwayne, you star is sent across a virtual dram and said thanks for a nice show, Roy. Thank you, Dwayne. It was just me myself tonight, but it's very very much a pleasure for me to bring it to you. Saying I wanted to wish you and your family a very merry Christmas. You star, Dwayne. Let me pick up this Kilhoman. and raise a glass and say, thank you for your virtual dram, Dwayne, and thank you for your continued support of this channel and the things I do. Thank you, my friend. Mm. And another drama in from Zach Andrews saying, thanks again, Roy. Merry Christmas, headed out. Wherever you're headed out to, Zach, 
have a fantastic time. I'm glad you were able to join, and I will not judge you that you're skipping out just before the quiz starts. I'm sure that you'll come back and pick up the quiz on the replay. Thank you, Zach. Pleasure to meet you. That was one of my highlights of 2018, and I'll talk about that next week, I think, on the on the VPUB next week. But getting to meet so many of the community, there's literally dozens of you in here that I've been able to meet face to face and shake your hands. And of course, that is my friend in Texas, Zach Andrews. Wonderful. Thank you, my friend. And Bill as well. You start. Is that a sourcing fee for the, the whiskey I've just um, I've just picked up from you from Glen Goyne? He's saying, uh, enjoy a dram of, over Christmas and give my love to your family. Thank you, Bill. The same right back to you and yours as well. Thank you very, very much for your virtual dram. And they, I hope that we can turn that into a real world dram this year. There must be something we can get up to the next time you come over, right? Thank you, Bill. Okay. Let's hit up this quiz. Slight like a paint. Okay, Craig. Craig Wadsworth has just sent in a dram as well, Craig. He's not said anything. There's no message, but I'll just say thank you very, very much. I'm getting through this Kilholman much quicker than anticipated. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you, Craig. Cheers to you. Happy Christmas. It's a new name in. The next time, Craig, make sure you take the opportunity of putting a little message in there, the Super Chats, and make sure that I always read out the Super Chat messages. And Emery is saying, I'll be disappointed if I can't beat the guy who didn't hear the questions. Well, let's see how we get on, Emery. Let's roll this quiz. Okay, so I lick a paint on the quiz. I've changed up things. Um, put the VPUB logo in the background and things like that. Um, previously, it was the Lefroy picture, which I love. I might actually get that Lefroy picture um, framed from my trip to Isla this year. But let's roll into question one and see how we get on tonight. Now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, this is uh, perhaps a tricky quiz tonight. A couple of banana skins in there, perhaps. Um, I All I'll say is that I have had feedback recently to say that people are enjoying and they don't mind the fact that the quizzes get a bit tricky because they do enjoy the inspiration to go off and learn or something. So people don't care if the quizzes are a wee bit tricky. James has just submit, bought me a virtual drama as well saying, cheers from Vegas, enjoy a bourbon on me. I will, James, I will enjoy a bourbon over these holidays. Hopefully I'll get to share a couple. Thank you, James. Okay, quiz. Question one, which of the following was not a compass box release? So I'm going to give you three answers here. And uh, one of them was not a compass box release. Was it Eleuthera, Bacchus, or Morpheus? A, Eleuthera, B, Bacchus, C, Morpheus. Okay, compass box have done a bunch of releases. And there's a, I think there's another compass box question later on in this quiz. I may have saved it for next week's quiz, but there may be two tonight, uh, but it's a very interesting one, the next question. But I like this one as well, just um, just kind of whimsical nature that compass box have about its releases. Which of these is in fact not a release from compass box? Lots of people think A. A seems to be the popular one, Magnus. B th seems to think, hi, Magnus, seems to think it's C. Uh, Jimmy Jazz is saying B. Let's see what Sid Martin is saying. Sid Martin thinks that it's A. And his previous, and his Facebook uh, answers that he gave me ahead of time, he's guessing A out the bat. So he thinks it's the Eleuthera. Let's go back and see. Compass Box did not release Bacchus. They did release an Eleuthera and they did release a Morpheus, but they did not release a Bacchus. Bacchus, I think, is the Greek god of wine, women, and song. When I lived in America, when I was in my early 20s, I was in America in a few months there. Uh, I worked at a pub in New Paltz, New York, called Bacchus. I wonder if Bacchus is still there. It's a pub restaurant, fantastic time. Question two. The... Alt Jarek, so that's Gaelic. Alt is a burn or a stream. Jarek is red, so the red burn or red stream is the water source for which distillery? Is it A. Bunahaven, 
B. Balblair, C. Brooklady. A water source question, eh? I'm very, very poor at these. There's a few water sources that I know. Uh, I did not know this one. I would have got this wrong. Or I guess I could have guessed it right, but I wouldn't have known it for sure. Let's see. Welsh Toro is saying compass box pass. So clearly he perhaps got that one wrong. Um, Whiskey Jason is saying C. Thinks it's Brook Laddie. Captain 3D thinks it's B, Bal Blair. Nicholas also B, Bill Dull, my friend Bill is in B. Ooh, lots of Bs actually, lots of Bs. Let's go back and see. Oak Jarrick, Red River or Red Stream, Red Burn is Bal Blair in the Highlands. Bal Blair uses Oak Jarrick as his water source. Interestingly, there, there's a, a distillery in um, Lewis called uh, Avon Jarrick as well, which Avon is like... Uh, Bonahaven, mouth of the river. Um, Avon is river and Jarrick is red. So Red River is the Lewis distillery as well. So there we go. I don't know Gaelic. I just know little factoids about Gaelic. Uh, question three. Try and go through this as quickly as I can. Which brand is associated with saving the life of King Alexander of Scotland in 1263? So in 1263, we're going back way before there's any record of whiskey distillation or anything in Scotland. But in 1263, there's a famous legend about how somebody saved the life of the King Alex sorry King Alexander of Scotland um, when he was attacked by a stag. Which brand is associated with that legend? Is it the Macallan? The Glenlivet or the Dalmore? It's one of the this. So I think there's a wee bit of a giveaway there. And even if it wasn't a giveaway, lots of people who know are giving it away in the chat right now. The sense of community is even in the quiz tonight. We are helping each other answer the questions. I predict everybody is going to answer C to this now. Who let the cat out the bag or the stag out the bag? Uh, James Alsop, <laughs> Jason Whiskey Wise, <laughs> Raster Connorstrang, and <laughs> Whiskey Jason and Mark R. <laughs> no problem. It's nice to have a, a few free questions, right? But I, I think that's fairly well known. I certainly would have, uh, that's one I would have got right tonight. Let's see. Is it indeed the Dalmore? Yes, the Dalmore. And the story behind that is that um, I think it was a Mackenzie, he was an archer, and the stag charged the king, and this archer was able to take the stag down with a single arrow, and so saved the king's life. And uh, I think his reward for such a thing was being given the uh, permission to use a 12-pointed, that is the antlers have 12 points, um, which is a royal ensign or, or, or something to do with, uh, you know, uh, by royal permission only, a 12-pointed stag, he could use it on his coat of arms thereafter, which is why, um, because of the Mackenzie family connection with Dalmore, they're able to use that stag on their branding. So we can see this is a pictorial question again, question four as normal. We're looking at it again. Uh, I need to get a bit more imaginative with these pictures, but we're looking at a distillery, and I just want you to look at this distillery and decide which distillery it is. Clearly, it's a new distillery. Is it Toravek, which is on the Isle of Skye? Is it Nicknean, which is on the Western Highlands, opposite Mull? Um, and also Ardnamurkin actually is also opposite Mull on the Western Highlands. So is it Toravek, Western Highlands? Sorry, Toravek Sky, Nicknean, Western Highlands, or Ardnamurkin? I'm gonna keep that up there while I look at the chat so you can study it. I don't think there's any clues in the image. Uh, so far all over the place, some C's, some A's, couple of B's, wow. So this is guesses coming in here. Uh, Jeremy Sims is saying, oh, the answer is a complete guess. B, yeah, absolutely, Jeremy, I understand where you're coming from. Hoyt is just sent across a virtual dram as well. Hoyt, you superstar, I'm going to raise a glass with you while everybody's looking at the picture of this distillery here and say thank you very, very much. I hope you too, Hoyt, have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for your virtual dram. 
It's my last sip of Kilholm in there. Thank you. Okay. Questions, are, uh, it's all over the place. Uh, Greg, Emery, Chris Banks Wildlife, good to see you, Chris, are all thinking it's C. Anna thinks B. Let's see. It is, in fact, Ardnamurkin. That is the new distillery uh, owned by, I believe, Adelphi. It's Adelphi that owns Ardnamurkin, right, on the Western Highlands. That is the rather attractive looking distillery, Ardnamurkin. Let's move on to question five, halfway point, and this one, a uh, whiskey YouTube question. I like to throw these in there. I just like to mix it up. This one is uh, Whiskey in the Six. Whiskey in the Six. Rob, he had a top six underrated and underpriced whiskies, but it did not include one of the following. So he put together a list of whiskies that he believed, and I, I was quite intrigued. He didn't come up with a normal top six list. I, I think he put some real thought into it, and I think I very much enjoyed what he shared on that video, but it did not include one of the following. A Macallan, a Johnny Walker, or a Dalmore. So one of these, all, his list was all about whiskies that he felt were indeed underrated and underpriced. He's talking about good value, good quality whiskies that not a lot of people may have been aware of. So one of them did not appear in the list. Was it a Macallan that didn't appear? Was it a Johnny Walker that didn't appear? Or was it a Dalmore that didn't appear? So I guess even if you're a fan of Rob and you're watching the video, you might have to be scratching your head thinking, oh, what did he have? What did he have in there again? And I think the point of me putting this uh, question in here is for you to go and look. Um, I was particularly intrigued by his number one. Uh, all over the place here, lots of C's. Uh, lots of C's, couple of B's. Greg thinks B, the Whiskey Bowman. Hello, Whiskey Bowman. That looks like a new name to me. Welcome in. Uh, Rob loves his Mac. He does. He does. But he's he's quite, he can be critical when he thinks that they're not living up to their uh, inflated prices, right? The Alchemist thinks A. Let's go back in and see. Rob did not include a Dalmore C. He didn't include a Dalmore in his underrated and underpriced. I'm not suggesting that's because all Dalmore are overrated and overpriced. No, nope. not at all. But I am suggesting that there was a McAllen in his lineup for very interesting reasons. Have a look. And there was also a Johnny Walker in his lineup as well. So a uh, very interesting video. So where are we at the halfway point there? That's the first five. Anybody looking strong tonight? How's it going down? We, I get no chance of keeping this under two hours. It's a disaster again. I'm at 23.37 here at UK time. Um, and we're only halfway through the quiz. Captain 3D is on five out of five. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Christina is saying first time at three out of five at the halfway point. Good for you, Christina. Keep that going. Um, Whiskey Wolf, two out of five. Struggling tonight, Rolf. Jason is five out of five. Superb, Jason, you star. Um, Wow, three, four out of five for Keith. Jimmy Jazz, three. Owen G, good to see you on three out of five. Um, now, I'm, I'm looking for Deepa. Phil, is Deepa in? Is she, is she there tonight? Is she playing alongside you? Island Hopper Stewart, one out of five. Unlucky Island Hopper Stewart. Try and keep it together. Do some recovery for the second part. I think it's a new name. Welcome in. John Paul Vanderhoven with a new... Uh, can, the, uh, just a new handle there, I think, but still the same name. Four out of five, great score, John Paul, superb. Um, okay, let's go on and see how if we can uh, keep up the good performances and recover the poor ones with question six. Who is credited with the design of the iconic pagoda-style roof seen on many distilleries? So you know what we're looking at. You saw it on the Arden uh distillery there, even though it's purely decoration on that distillery. Was it Aeneas Coffee? John G. Smith, Charles C. Doig. So was it A, Aeneas Coffey, B, John G. Smith, or Charles C. Doig? So I'm going to leave that up there for a second, but I don't think you need it up there for that long, actually. What I do need to do is go back up and keep Sid Martin's score because I've... Uh, I've not been keeping Sid's score. I'd completely forgotten about it. And if you've been reminding me, I didn't see you reminding me. 
So B was the first one, that's a wrong. Second one was B, that's wrong, Sid, sorry. Three is C, wrong. <laughs> sorry, Sid. C for, oh, you got question four right, Sid, so you're on one. You're not on a donut. And question five was C, wrong. So Sid at the halfway point is sitting on one. And question six, the pagoda style roof. Uh, let's go back to the crowd and see. Yes, most of you know this one. Jimmy Legacy, he's got no clue, but it is, of course, Doig's ventilator. Charles C. Doig. Kudos points to anybody who can tell me what the C stands for. I know you're probably going to Google it, but um, yes, Charles C. Doig invented that famous efficient ventilator that has now become such an iconic marker of a distillery in Scotland and elsewhere in the world as well. Okay, question seven. Compass Box question. I did put it in this week. I like this question though. Compass Box has released a stranger and stranger, which is not. So what I want to know this stranger and stranger, sorry, stranger and stranger from Compass Box is not one of these. It is not a NAS. It's not an honest statement whiskey. B, it is not a whiskey, it's something else other than whiskey. Or C, it's not blended. Now, Compass Box, we know for doing their creations, they're uh, they typically a knowledge statement. Uh, typically, uh, the, you know, the, the makeup of the whiskey, you can discover what's in it, but we don't know, but it's normally blends and blended malts that they release. But what is this Stranger and Stranger release? What is it not? I.e., A, that means it must have an age statement this time, or B, it means it isn't whiskey this time, or C, it, it isn't blended this time, it is indeed a single malt. What have they gone and done? What is that crazy cat, John Glazer, gone and done? Ooh, quite surprised to see this all over the place. Lots of people favour B with a few A's. Nobody, oh, Donald thinks it's C, which is, it's not blended, it's single malt this time, he admits that he's guessing. Lots of people saying B. Okay, let's look. John Glazer this time in the Stranger and Stranger expression has released a whiskey that is not whiskey. It's not whiskey. Let me explain. He's got a Glen Lossy, Glen Elgin. Oh, I can't remember what else was in there. Uh, there's a few other was Linkwood, I think. But he's got these whiskeys from 7 to 22 years old. Nice malt whiskeys. And he's uh, putting 1% of an 18 month old grain whiskey that he was using to season raw casks. But he tasted it at 18 months and decided it was lovely and realized that just adding a tiny little drop of it to this blend added something. And they've released this, put it out there as a product and uh, the price to join that club is 150 pounds. 150 pounds is not stupidly expensive for a 22 year old liquid, let's say, but it's on the pricey side. It's not expensive for a 17 year old Glen Lossy, let's say. I don't know what these are actually, I'm just saying these. I'm just giving you the, my opinion here. It's very expensive, 150 pounds for that. Obviously we're not paying for the 18 month old grain because there's so little of it in there. But what that 18 month old grain has done is rendered it not a whiskey, it can't be called a whiskey. There's a component in there that's too young to be called a whiskey, so they've released it as Stranger and Stranger, a spirit drink. But the £150 you're paying for a Compass Box brand and you're putting your trust into Compass Box that that's going to be a wonderful whiskey. The bottle design is gorgeous. It always is very, very good with Compass Box. But £150, it's close to $200, might be more. I'm cynical. Sure, it'll be delicious, but I've got other things to spend my money on. Let's go on to question eight. Which brand can you easily buy red label, green label, black label, and white label contemporary expressions? Fairly straightforward, but it has to be something that's recognizable and contemporary and you can buy it in a modern environment. <laughs> Is it Dewar's blended scotch? Is it Evan Williams Kentucky bourbon? Is it Johnny Walker blended scotch? So who has red label, green label, black label, and white label expressions available 
in modern times. Is it A, Dewar's Blended Scotch, B, Evan Williams' Kentucky Bourbon, is it C, Johnny Walker Blended Scotch? Hope, let's see what the crowd think about this one. Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker, C, 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 Dwayne Lager saying B. C, 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 everybody thinks C. Uh, Whiskey Scout is saying B. Am I making these questions too easy? Kilton Moose is saying B. And Hump and Humbug, <laughs> like that name, is saying B as well. Let's have a look who has red label, green label, black label, and white label. It is, in fact, Evan Williams' Kentucky Bourbon. Yes, I'm waiting on the reaction. There was a Johnny Walker white label, but you can't buy Johnny Walker white label in modern times. I don't think you can, at least. I looked and looked and looked and you can't. You can buy Johnny Walker white walker. You can buy Dewar's white label. The only producer that has all of those uh, red label, blue label, green label, white label is Evan Williams, Kentucky bourbon. Uh, Marcus saying, what? <laughs> Magnus is saying, banana skin. Uh, cast strength the same got him. <laughs> so that's a, a fist pump coming across from Vito there. And Bill looks like Bill Dull looks like he had got that one right as well. Well done, Bill. Let's move quickly on to question nine. I like this question as well. Robert Louis Stevenson's 1880 poem, A Scotsman's Return from Abroad, featured. Now, and I'm not expecting you to know about Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, but, yeah, read the question. Robert Louis Stevenson's 1880 poem, A Scotsman's Return from Abroad, featured the Glenlivet, Bonahaven or Tomatin. His poem featured one of those distilleries. Was it A, the Glenlivet, B, Bonahaven, or C, Tomatin? It's quite a cool line. I don't know the poem and I'm not familiar with it, but it's a cool line and I liked it. It was in 1880 this poem was published. And Tom is reminding me, fantastic, not to forget to update uh, the absentees score. Thank you, Tom. You star. Let's go through and catch that quickly. What was six? Was C? He got six wrong. He got Seven correct, so he's on two. Eight, uh, it was B, he got that wrong. So he's currently on two for nine. He got this question wrong as well. I'm going to share with you what that is. It is, in fact, the Glenlivet. Robert Louis Stevenson's 1880 poem, A Scotsman's Return from Abroad, featured the Glenlivet. Now, I'll say to you that Bonahaven was founded in 1881 and Tomatin was 1897. I'm not suggesting you should know that, but it was a way for you to figure that out. If you didn't know your Robert Louis, sorry, Robert Louis Stevenson poetry, and here is the line from that. That's a picture of uh, a Robert himself. Looks a wee bit like he did enjoy a dram, wouldn't you say? And he's, his line is, the king of drinks as I conceive it. Talisker, Isla, or Glenlivet. So there you go, Robert Louis Stevenson. Question 10, last question. Let's see what we're on. Six for nine, five for nine for Kevin Bryant, five for nine, six for nine for Jason, uh, Whiskey Jason. Um, Rolf, six for nine, decent scores. Gregor, eight for nine, fantastic Gregor, superb. Toby, four for nine, could make it a pass mark if you get the last one, Toby, go for it. Donald is saying six and nine, the Whiskey Scout is saying seven. And Captain 3D, five out of nine, oh dear, he's hit the he's hit the buffers, he's just stopped. Jason Coates, eight out of nine, still going strong. Jason, you're in good position, surely. Is there anybody on nine out of nine? Nicholas, Nicholas Polasic is on eight out of nine as well. Good to see you, Nicholas. Good score, fantastic score. Mark who's on seven out of nine. Let's go on to question 10. See if we can keep these. Uh, John Pallister is on eight out of nine on guesses. Fantastic, John. Okay, question 10. It's possible to gift yourself this Christmas a 52-year-old Macallan for how much? A, £38,500, B, £42,500, C, £46,500. I'm going to leave those up there just to let you see them, but we're talking about 52-year-old Macallan. Wow, special, right? But this is for a single bottle of whiskey. It's not for us. 
Is it A, 38 and a half grand, B, 42 and a half grand, or C, 46 and a half grand? Cast strength is saying B, Keith Corbett, Mark, Kevin, Jimmy Jazz all saying C, Humper Humbug A, Kilted Moose seems to think that it is B. Mark is quite right saying, Mark R is saying your very soul. Dundee Drummer, 38 quid. Hey Dundee Drummer, good to see you in as well. And Mark R, that looks like a new name to me. Welcome if it is. Lots of guesses in here. Uh, I think McAllen Final Rare has gone to bed early tonight. He is an hour ahead of us. I was looking for a strong score from him. Um, let's see. So McAllen's 52 year old. Just released for a sweet 38,500 a bottle. So that was the cheapest of those three options. An absolute bargain, a snip at 38 and a half grand for a bottle of whiskey. I know it's 52 years old. I know it's McAllen. But how disposable is money to you if you can sit and sip that whiskey and enjoy it, knowing that that's what you paid for it? But you're not going to sip it, are you? That's the point. You're never, ever going to drink it. And that, to me, is an utter crime. Anyway, there we go. Um, it's not whiskey intended for me. It's not whiskey intended for us. The whiskey that we enjoy is all about this. It's all about you guys sitting in the lounge. It's all about us sitting in this kind of virtual V pub, this virtual pub together, enjoying our whiskey. Mm -hmm. I've shared with you my five whiskeys that I connected with in 2018. These are genuine experiences for me, whiskeys that I rediscovered again, whiskeys that I discovered this year. There are lots and lots of whiskeys out there. I'm always saying it, but it's a good time to be loving whiskey. The choice is never ever been as wide as it is. Yes, there are cynical bottlings out there. Yes, there are values that are not, there are bottles that are not good value, but that's the job of us as a community. Please remember to not just leave your comments in the lounge like you have tonight, but if you've anything has struck you tonight, comment on the main video because the intelligence and the feedback and the knowledge from you guys goes there permanently and the community benefits out of that. And the comments that are building up under these videos on these channels the knowledge that's there, the pool of knowledge, the information, the tidbits, the little facts, it's gold. And I love when I watch a video scrolling down and reading the comments, it's fantastic stuff. Loving whiskey, loving the whiskey community, and very much loving the community that supports me and YouTube as well. I am doing a stream next week on the 27th of the week. Tonight will be my last of the weekly streams in December. That'll be four in December, five in a row. Um, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed all the people that's turned up. They've still been very, very busy streams. Um, fantastic to have your support as always. There will be a Patreon only stream coming up very soon. I'm trying to find time over the holidays to do it, but it might slip into January. The only way that can happen over the holidays is perhaps if the Whiskey Rev and I do it, but he might be up for doing a public stream as well and I would bite his hand off to do that, I think, if the timing could work out. Um, lots of other things I wanted to talk about, but nothing so important that it can't keep till next week. I'm going to raise this little bit of spring bank <laughs> that I've still got left in the glass and say thank you to everybody for joining on another fantastic stream. Let's see if there's any comments coming in that I want to catch just before you disappear. Dwayne is saying thanks Roy for a very nice show. Thank you very much for your time Dwayne. Thanks for turning up and enjoying it. Uh, Kevin is saying ding ding last orders before bed. Cheers and have a great Christmas. I haven't managed to keep it to under two hours. It's really embarrassing because it's only me again. Is the camera even on me or is it still on the quiz? Nope, it's on me, good. But I do enjoy this. I enjoy hanging out with you guys. I enjoy the chat. I think it's fantastic and it's very, very easy for me to go over two, two hours. It's quite bizarre. Uh, Christina's saying, for your information, Roy Bacchus is still around. At least it was a few years ago. Wonderful place we fr frequented often. Great place for food and drink with friends after a hard day of climbing the gunks. Wow, Christina. So you know Bacchus. It was a Mexican restaurant when I worked there. Um, it was the first time I ever tried burritos and uh, all sorts of Mexican food that was strange to me as a 20-year-old little Scots guy going over to, to, to New York. And it was a great experience for me. Wow, if you know Bacchus, that would be amazing. Emery is saying, which bottle is dressed up like Santa? Good shout, Emery. That is, uh, I've got one of these somewhere else, I think. Or at least I thought I did. No, I'll show you what Santa is. 
Uh, this is an independent bottling from the Good Spirits Company in Glasgow. This is their nine-year-old Athrusk, um, a delicious bourbon matured whiskey. Um, they did 310 bottles of this at cast strength, and they're selling it at 50 pounds at Good Spirits Company. Um, I got to try a wee sip of that today, um, and I was glad to pick one up for myself and one as a gift as well. Lots of people saying positive things about it. Uh, quite a limited release, though, not widely available. Good, good shop in Glasgow Good Spirits Company. Good guys in there as well. Um, ah, John Pallister has just said all the best, Roy, and bought me a virtual dram. Thank you very, very much, John. I'll raise a glass to you and say Merry Christmas. And thank you for your virtual dram. Jason Coates is saying, when it's only you, you have 150 guests. Be interesting to see what the, we usually get the stats afterwards. Um, but I I noticed it was quite a wee bit higher than that tonight at one point, but it tends to peak and then drops off quite fast. Um, we managed to get round about that for uh, for Scott's show last week, for example. Um, the, the, the support I've had, Jason, to be honest, on this scenario, on this setup, on these live streams is astonishing. I love it. I absolutely love it and I hope that you guys too. Magnus is saying good night, see you soon. I'll see you in a week from now, Magnus. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Great fun. Christine Deems is saying thank you for another great VPUB and quiz. Thank you, Christine. Gregor is saying uh, thanks, Aquavite. A great Christmas to you and everyone. Right back at you, Gregor. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Jason is saying thank you for another magnificent stream. I want to say thank you to Jason. I want to say thank you to Jason Whiskey Wise. That guy uh, it turns up for me every week here. He is a peer. He's got his own channel, doing his own content and his own thing. He's very, very deeply involved in the whiskey community and the whiskey scene down in London as well and everywhere. And he turns up here to support me. Jason, if you ever start your own streams, remember that there's somebody here willing to try to support you as much as you've supported me in the last, uh, the last year. There is a package arriving at your door tomorrow. As you know, I shipped it today and I hope that it will bring some cheer for you over the holidays. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, my friend. Christina is saying it's still the same food, still Mexican and Bacchus. I would love to go back there again. Um, Whiskey Throttle is saying he's back. What did he miss? Don't worry, Throttle. The great thing is you can always pick it up on the stream. And Whiskey Sneerson is in saying Merry Christmas, good show, and giving me a virtual dram across from Canada. Thank you, Whiskey Sneerson. It's nice to welcome you in here. Thank you very much. Sean Nemo is in. First time I've spotted you, Sean. Getting in here late. Merry Christmas, Aquaviti. Merry Christmas to you, Sean, as well. Thank you for turning up and saying hello. Um, hopefully you can go back and catch some of the chat, but there was no guest. It was just me tonight. Uh, Daniel's saying Jason is a superstar. He is. He absolutely is. He's a very nice guy as well when you meet him. And he's saying thank you much. Jason is saying thank you very much, Aquaviti. A pleasure to be here. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Remember the Scotch for Dummies. I've got a live later on tonight. It goes out about two or three o'clock in the morning for us in Europe. But for the guys in the States, the time zone might suit you very well. I wish you all a very happy Christmas. I hope you have a wonderful time. I hope, to, I hope you get a chance to put your feet up and enjoy some nice drams. I hope you get a chance to share them as well. And I will see you a week from now. Whiskey and Six Robs. Just dropped in and caught me at the last minute saying, Merry Christmas, Roy. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope to see some of you later tonight. Ah, Rob has a stream as well. Rob, tell me when your stream is. I'll stay live so that everybody can know what time your stream is as well. Uh, Mr. Goo82, fantastic, has just sent an, a virtual drama as well. Um, no, no comment or anything, but thank you very much, Rob. And thank you, Mr. Goo82. Happy Christmas, Nigel Lynn is saying, Merry Christmas, pal. Merry Christmas, everyone. Heading up to Scotland tomorrow for the holidays. I wonder if any distilleries are open. You might be surprised. Um, I think they follow similar opening times to regular businesses. Um, obviously, I would just phone ahead. But I would suggest that there's going to be lots of uh, whiskey shenanigans that you can get up to, Nigel. Wonderful. Welsh Toro is saying, Happy Christmas, my friend. Rob is saying, 8.30 Eastern. Okay, so where are we just now? Let's fathom that out. It's my in my head hurts too much to work that out. I think you're, that's one thirty in the morning for us. So that's going to be just ahead of the Scotch for Dummies, Rob. So Rob is going to keep the live stream action going. Um, if you're on Rob's time zone, tune in and uh, join him and raise a glass to him as well. Thank you all for your support. Wonderful tonight. 
great to see you all and I look forward to welcoming you here for the last stream. I've just had another another uh, drama. You see how it's going on. Wonderful, Jimmy. It's fantastic. $10 in from Jimmy Jazz saying Merry Christmas to all. Jimmy, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody. And again, once more, slancha Jimmy Jazz, slancha to everyone. I'll see you on the 27th a week from tonight. Thank you. Spring bike.